It's time for Twig this week, and Google Jeff has the week off. But good news, Matt Cutts is here. We're on Amadio from Ars Technica. We're going to give you a little preview of Android, and Ron's been playing with it all week, so have I. We'll tell you about uh, what it does and why it's something you're going to want to put on your Pixel C. Also, uh, good news and bad news for Google in court. And 77% uh, of all Google traffic is now encrypted. Some really good news. Matt Cutts has that. Lots more to come. Stay tuned. Google is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 344, for Wednesday, March 16th, 2016. The thermally effective networked tent. This Week in Google is brought to you by FreshBooks, the super simple cloud accounting software that's giving thousands of freelancers and small businesses the tools they need to save time billing and get paid faster. Try it free at freshbooks.com slash twig. And by Atlassian. Unleash your team's potential with collaborative software tools like HipChat and Jira. It'll enable you to work and communicate better together. Visit Atlassian.com to learn more. It's time for Twig! This week in Google, the show where we cover the latest news from the Google-verse. Jeff Jarvis has the week off, but I should mention next week, this week in Google, we'll be in New York City at Jeff's Brand new studio, a CUNY, and Gina Trapani will be joining us in studio. I'll be there, as will Jeff. So that's going to be a lot of fun next week. This week, though, great panel for you. Starting out with one of the proto-Googlers himself, Matt Cutts, <laughs> is back. Great to see you, Matt. Hey, good to be back. Always, always love him. You've you've seen him for years on those great Webmaster videos, Webmaster Tools videos. And, uh, of course, he's been fighting the good fight, fighting spam on your uh, search results for many a moon. On sabbatical right now, which is nice. You yeah, nothing new to report. You enjoying it? I cannot complain. Yeah, you don't it's... miss, like, going into work 9 to 5 every day? Well, I, I, you know, the funny thing is I keep reading the Google News. I can't help myself. Yeah. I'm like, how could this country do this or yeah. whatever? Yeah, so. you got your, <laughs> you got your, I mean, you don't have the, I'm sure, a tattoo, but you might as well. <laughs> your blood runs yeah. in colors, primary <laughs> colors. Little, little rainbow, you know, <laughs> thug life on the back or something. <laughs> also, there, oh, there he is at the Google Dance, which is the event you th that Google throws every year for uh, press, right? Uh, yeah, a, a bunch of uh, search engine optimizers. Oh, SEO people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not press. They're welcome, too. Yeah. It's a dance. Yeah. But it's all guys, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure there's one or two female. Uh, participants. There were. There were. I'm sure there are. Nice people. Nice people. They're strange, though. They're they're from another planet. Uh, we all are. <laughs> we right? all are. Let's face it. Everybody's strange once you really find out. Ron Amadio is also here from Ars Technica. We love Ron. His coverage of Google is par excellence. And I guess it's the first time you, you two have met. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hey. What's up? Awesome to be here. Uh, Ron's yeah. here. Good to meet Matt. Ron's a regular on this show and on uh, all about Android. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I'll do this. Team. That's yeah. That's yeah. yeah. We're, we're all joined somehow magically <laughs> as we. Uh, so uh, Matt uh, is a little tired this morning. Oh man, he stayed up all night, <laughs> pulled an all nighter watching TV, <laughs> but not House of Cards. No, mm. the Go. You watched Alpha Go uh, win the fifth and final game of its match against Lisa Dahl. In fact, at this point, the real story of the five-game match is that Lee Sedol won any game at all. He won one, game mm -hmm. four, even though the match was already lost. So what is your takeaway from this? AlphaGo, we should mention, is uh, was from a company called DeepMind. Google acquired DeepMind not so long ago, and uh, so it's a Google company, or an Alphabet, I should say Alphabet company now. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's pretty wild because Go... Is especially popular in, uh, in, in you know China, Japan, Korea, and so the the match was the matches were staged at 1 p.m. Korea time, which means it starts at you know 8, 9, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock Eastern time, depending on where you are. So there were some people who were like in the chats for the various things, saying it's 4 a.m. Please let me go to bed. But 
it's crazy to see this thing, you know, it's like deep blue. It's like history being made where people never thought, you know, within the next 10 years or even maybe within our lifetime that a computer would be a viable competitor in Go. And so it's pretty wild to see, you know, these people talking about strategy and Aji and Co. And I know nothing about Go, <laughs> but it was still hypnotic. So it was a lot of fun. I used to play Go. Yeah. I was a very serious chess player. I used to play Go as well. And it's a much, much harder game than chess, even though it looks a lot simpler. It's just a 19 by 19 board. There's only one kind of piece. It's a stone. You're black or you're white. And you place the stones. You take turns. And the idea is to occupy territory. Where If you surround the other player's stones, you can take them off the board. And once the, all the stones are placed, you count up who controls more territory, and that's how you win. But it's tough. It yeah, I, I stayed up a few nights watching them till like 3 a.m. But uh, the 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 commentators, like I was saying before the show, are awesome. As someone who knows absolutely nothing about Go, they have like their own little fake board and they like lay out moves and say, oh, we could go here or here or here. And and they kind of explain the game to you as it goes along because it's rather slow and there's, there's plenty of time in between moves. Uh, but if you actually want to watch it, uh, DeepMind has a YouTube channel with all of the games on there and like 15-minute recaps of each game. So if you missed it, you can go take a look and see see what all the fuss was about. Uh, Michael Redmond is the uh, guy on the right. He is uh, a 9 Dan, which is the top ranking. So he's the equivalent of a Go Grandmaster. Um, and he uh, is explaining... Uh, what's going on? Like leave this. The game to you fact, as it goes like along because it's rather but, slow. Uh, there's, there's yeah, there's a lot of time. In fact, the uh, game itself. Oh, I guess I have a tab open with your voice in it somehow. Somewhere. <laughs> Let me close. I thought that was you talking, but then I realized <laughs> that's the same thing he just said. Uh, um, this. Uh, what's interesting about this is. Um, black will cut here. And white plays here. Those of us who watch chess matches, and like a, I cut my teeth in 1972 on the Bobby Fischer Boris Spassky uh, match. This it's case, exactly the, the same the thing. These games go on for a long time. This game went on for five hours. <laughs> five hours. <laughs> and uh, the moves actually are a little faster sometimes in chess because, and I'm not sure how the timing works, but at some point the timers go to one minute per move. And yeah. so you're going to, then it, this game does speed up quite a bit. One minute of move is, is <laughs> for chess or go. Hey, pretty snappy. <laughs> it ain't tennis, I admit. But um, the thing that's really interesting is it's been almost, I didn't realize this until I looked it up, almost 20 years since Deep Blue beat Gary Kasparov, the world champion, to become the best chess playing computer in the world. 20 years between then and now, when a computer finally becomes the best Go player, and I think it's safe to say, and from all the commentary I've read, and even from Lisa Dahl, the player, that, that it is the case that AlphaGo is now the best Go player, human or otherwise, in the world. It's really good. And, and if it's not, give it a few weeks for it to do more number crunching, <laughs> right. and it'll get there. Right. Why? Do you know why it's so hard to play Go? Why is it the? it took 20 years? of Chess, it was able to look far enough ahead that it could just look at any position and, and and within the time limit, there is a time limit in all professional games, uh, figure out what the best move was and make it. Um, it it's apparently too hard to do that and go. Right. right. Well, and you I, can, there's too many possibilities. Oh, either way, take a shot, Ron. You go. <laughs> the, yeah, what, what I had always heard is that you could basically brute force chess. Like there's a, a set number of moves and you can kind of calculate out whatever do like a search tree and calculate out whatever the optimal you can go, is. Where you can go deep enough. You can't go all the way to the end of the game. Yeah. But you sure, can go 20 or 30 moves, which is in a, in a reasonable amount of time, which is enough to know, to get to a point where you go, this is a uh, unlosable game. Yeah, but with Go, there's just too many possible spots for any kind of like natural, uh, for any kind of normal computer algorithm to, right. to get... To calculate so it has that. to be an artificial intelligence that actually can uh, look at a position and intuit it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. what's amazing so, about about the DeepMind stuff is that it's general. It, it's a general AI where like the the IBM stuff um, was they built a, a computer specifically for chess, uh, where the the DeepMind stuff has already played um, what was it Breakout, the video game. Uh, they want to take it and have it do StarCraft next, I think, that they had said in an interview. It, it's, it, they, they kind of, it figures out the rules of the game on its own, I think, for, for a lot of the video games and stuff like that. And It's and, a learning computer. So um, 
Right. The way it taught, you know, the deep, deep blue, you you get, you kind of taught it. They had grand masters uh, show it positions and say, this is better. The, it, this deep mind taught itself, in effect, by playing thousands, tens of thousands of games against itself. Yeah. Wow. Right. And another neat thing is that they actually published the uh, the results in a nature paper. So you can read about how they did it. But there's, for example, a couple different neural networks. They called one a policy network and one a value network. And uh, so they actually got to the point where they could predict where the world-class Go players were going to play, you know, something like 57% of the time. Oh, and if you can do that, you can radically reduce where you need to search, you know, to find the next good plays. So what was interesting about watching the live stream is people, even the experts, didn't always know who was winning. Right. And, you know, at the end, they'd be like, oh, I see now black has the advantage or white has the advantage. And it was kind of interesting because uh, AlphaGo is always updating its stats about what it thinks its odds of winning are. And so one of the neural networks is just to sort of figure out, okay, what are, what are likely to be the best positions so it can narrow down the, the, the search quite a bit? It's... Uh, it's uh I think more than winning a chess game, it's a step forward for AI, a kind of almost a proof of concept uh, that a neural network can actually do some real work. We've seen more and more of this, as particularly from Google, although Facebook also has a Go playing computer. And, and there was a little bit of a sour grapes kind of response. <laughs> uh, we've yeah. got to see them play each other. Come on. That's the That would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I love the post from the Facebook AI guy that was like, well, sure, you can make the world's best <laughs> Go playing computer, but did it learn to play Go completely by itself or did you bootstrap with a database of, you know, watching other games? And I'm like, you know, it's still the first time that's ever happened. That, that's a pretty <laughs> big milestone. Yeah. So give it a little bit of it's credit. a little bit of an uh, obscure. I mean, that's when, I, you know, some of this happens, the same thing happened in chess. Um, that is exactly what... The pe what people said when Deep Blue won was, oh, well, it was it was trained to beat Kasparov. It was designed to beat this particular player. And But what we've seen in the years intervening is even a PC now can beat 99.9% .9 of all players routinely. That, in fact, it, I think it's safe to say at this point that with Fritz or one of the strong uh, computer programs that can run on a multi-core PC... It's not a question. The chess playing computers are the best, period, yeah. better than any human. And what's interesting is the Go community is going through a lot of the same kind of grief <laughs> that the yeah. chess community went through 20 years ago. We got over it and uh, didn't stop people playing chess, even though, you know, you had the knowledge that a computer could win this game. Um, it's still a fun puzzle for humans to solve. It doesn't take any of that away. In fact, a computer, uh, human chess players really now partner with computers for training, for sparring, for analysis. Uh, computers are a very big part of chess now, and it's a, a nice symbiosis. It's not, you know, they're not the enemy. But, again, it's not about the game, and we can go on and on. There's a lot of, uh, we had an interview on the new screensavers with the head of the American Go Association. One of the things he said is that uh, AlphaGo doesn't play like a human. For instance, when you're playing as a human, you're kind of calculating in your head, well, how many squares am I ahead? How many points am I ahead? And can I build that lead? Uh, AlphaGo doesn't care how much it's ahead by. What it's always looking at is, can I win the game? Even if I only win by half a point, can I win the game? And a human does, just doesn't think that way. So it's it plays a different game, but it's a computer. We would expect computers to think differently, right? Mm. The goal is not to teach a computer to think like a human. Yeah, and, and that strategy made the live games super close. Like, it, it would never try to right. pull away by a million points. Yeah, humans try to crush the opponent. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't care. It's got no It's got no skin in the game. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it doesn't want to crush or not crush. Although, I guess you could probably um, teach it to have that desire. I don't know if it That seems like it's insulting. Like, oh, I, don't need a, I don't need a huge lead. Just this move is close enough. That, I will beat be you, little human. I don't need to beat you by <laughs> much. As long as I win, who cares? <laughs> Matt, do you follow AI at all? I mean, uh, you must have some kind of at least academic interest in it. Yeah, I do. And it's kind of funny because I, uh, where I went to grad school, it was in the middle of artificial intelligence winter and everybody was like, oh, uh -huh. we're not even going to uh -huh. teach any courses in artificial intelligence. It's failed. And, uh, it's a failed subject. We wow. can't do it. It's, oh, it's over. <laughs> 
Right. Mm -hmm. And now you look at what people are, I mean, even the voice recognition on your Android phone, yeah. you know, has a lot of word error rate correction built in because of this sort of deep learning. So Google Photos, all this stuff is going to become practical a lot faster than people expect it to. And uh, so I, I, a lot of people are like, okay, mobile, social, local. If, if it were me, I would probably pull one of those out and probably slot in machine learning as a skill to be studying right now because there's a lot of ways that software will eat the world, as Mark Andreessen has often said. And, and I think artificial intelligence is one of the ways in which you can get ahead of that trend and sort of figure out how to be part of, you know, making that change instead of being surprised by it. Yeah. Um, do you, a lot of experts, including Mark and... Uh Others say, but we also need to be careful. <laughs> sure. <laughs> do you, yeah. Do you fear AI? <laughs> well, I, you know, any any power tool, yeah. uh, you, you, you whether it's link networks or whatever, you want to have a healthy sense of caution. Uh, but it's kind of interesting. I think Demis, the you know one of the co-founders and 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 heads of uh, of DeepMind, whenever Google acquired DeepMind, he said, okay, we also want to set up an ethics panel right. to think about the implications of this. So you know, even back years ago, whenever DeepMind got acquired, they were thinking along those lines and. Certainly, you know, 20 years from now, we'll have computers and, and robots doing more jobs that people do today. So thinking about how that is going to affect society, I think that's probably going to affect society more in the near term. A lot of the people I talk to say, you know, we're still a generation away from worrying about, you know, you know, the scariest sort of scenarios that a lot of people seem to bandy about. Uh, Elon Musk, who's another person who said we have to worry a little bit about AI, uh, the founder, uh, one of the one of the uh, principles that uh, Y Combinator and others have put a billion dollars towards a, a nonprofit AI research company called OpenAI. I think some of the concern is we don't, and I think this is legitimate. It shouldn't be any more than the human genome should be owned by a single company. Mm -hmm. AI shouldn't be owned, despite the fact that we we really do have a kind of a race between Facebook, Google, and others. AI shouldn't be owned by any individual private corporation. It should be. Uh, something that everybody can use. Well, and there's a neat tension there because on one hand, Google has published a lot of these papers and we've open sourced TensorFlow, which is sort yeah, of our yeah. machine learning framework. So a lot of people can all try it, you know, and I think Facebook has also uh, open sourced theirs as well. And so rather than try to hold on to their proprietary silos, a lot of these companies are letting go and letting other good. people try out ideas, which is good. The only thing is then, you know, 20 years from now, what might be the unintended consequences if it's easier to experiment? But for the near term, <laughs> there's so many benefits. We've you know, made it too can... easy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but, but, you Microsoft's know, like even doing this. Microsoft just yeah. released uh, Project AIX, which I love. It uses Minecraft. See, one of the problems with AI is uh, how do you test it? How do you, where, how do you give it a playground? Of course, one way is to make a Go-playing computer or a chess-playing computer. But Microsoft is making it possible to use Minecraft, uh, and they have an, a library, and interface, so that you can use Minecraft for your AI to test it, for AI research. And they've also opened this up, which is great. Um, so AIX, if you, want, if you don't want to learn how to play Go, learn how to play Minecraft. But as you say, AlphaGo learned Breakout first. Yeah, they, they fact, ran it through like 13 different Atari games, I think. Because <laughs> yeah, like it's general purpose. Yeah. It, it's, they they want to use it for, I think, medical, um, some kind of medical diagnostic thing next. The, the DeepMind has a bunch of presentations out there where they talk about kind of the future and how they want to apply this to actual useful things besides just beating video games. Right. Um, all right, let's take a break. When we come back, I know, Ron, you've played with it. I'm sure, Matt, you have too. I'm calling it uh, Android Nut Roll. Uh, <laughs> I don't think Google will. <laughs> we know Nut. Yeah, there he is. Hiroshi Lockheimer uh, said that Nut would be in the name or implied it. He says, I'm not going to tell you what the name is. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the new version of Android. I've put it on my, uh, my 6P. And uh, well, actually, I started with my Pixel C thinking, well, it couldn't make it any worse. Uh, and, may <laughs> and maybe, no, actually, I, you know what? To be honest, I love my Pixel C. Um, but the sp I thought split screen will be really good on a tablet. Uh, and, it, and it was so stable and reliable, I thought, well, I can put it on my 6P now. This is, uh, this is actually surprisingly ready. Not recommending it, but, but, <laughs> but it is an early, it's an early, it's first beta, it's an alpha. 
Um, but Google is allowing anybody with a modern Nexus device to uh, try it out. We'll talk about Ron. You can give us your feedback, Matt. Too, if you've got anything to say about. Have you? You've tried it, Matt? Right? Come on. Uh, I could neither confirm nor what? deny that. You're not I'm allowed. He's been, run it's he's been running it for the last three months. From <laughs> it's public for crying out loud. No. I'll let Ron comment on it. <laughs> oh, okay. Ron and I will talk about it. Our show today brought to you by Fresh Books. If you're a freelancer or you're on sabbatical and uh, you want to send out invoices, you know, you have to send out the invoices to get paid. You probably don't really want to follow, fire up Google Docs and put, get the spreadsheet and put all your expenses in there and then create an invoice and print it out and... Uh, lick it, the stamp, and put it on the envelope and mail it. You probably want to do it easier. In fact, it's such a burden. It was always such a burden for me to send out invoices that I often just didn't, you know, and I'd, I'd put it off. I go, oh, I don't want to do that, uh, which means you don't get paid because with no invoice, no pay. So what's nice, FreshBooks, they came along in, uh, I think I started using them in 2003, 2004, and it made it so easy to do uh, invoices that I would email. Clients paid faster because it was easier for them to pay. And they've just gotten better and better. And you know what the best part about FreshBooks is? It organizes all your cash flow information. You can see what invoices you've sent, who's paid you, what your income is, which makes it easy for, yeah, tax time. Tax time. Their mobile app will let you take pictures of receipts, organize them for later, which means it's easy to invoice for them if you get, if you get reimbursed or claiming them as expenses when uh, tax time comes around. You're just going to love this feeling. The reports make it so simple to either go to your accountant or do it yourself. Now, it probably is a little too late for tax time this year if you haven't been using FreshBooks, but now would be a good time to start for next year, especially since we've got a free 30-day trial for you. Go to freshbooks.com slash twig. Get the app on iOS and Android. You'll love it. It's ridiculously simple cloud accounting software, and it lets you sail through tax time, sail through those chores at the end of the month that make you get paid faster, uh, even if you're not a numbers person. Actually, especially if you're not a numbers person. FreshBooks, I loved it. I really did. FreshBooks.com slash twig for 30 days free. This week in Google, Matt Cutts is here, Ron Amadio from Ars Technica. And uh, we were kind of surprised in the middle of twig last week when the – when uh, What? All of a sudden, it said, hey, you can install uh, Android N. We don't even have a name for it, but you can install it if you have a Nexus 5X or a 6P or a Pixel C or um, the Nexus 9, although I think that's held up a little bit. Um, so, Ron, you put it on your 6P. I put it on a Nexus 6, old school. Old? Uh, okay. Wow. Old school phone. I, I don't have a 6P on It doesn't work on right the now. 5, unfortunately, so uh, there are some people left out, but if you have a recent Nexus phone. Right. Um, it, it's it's just a developer preview. So, you know, don't go don't go running off to install it on your actual production phones. Um, but uh, it's a cool look for, I guess, mainly app developers to kind of get ahead of the the changes that they're going to make in the new app. Having system. said that, I found it to be pretty stable, though. Right. Have you had the only issues I've had, like when I run Instagram, Instagram complains, your libraries, they're so weird. And then it just goes on and runs normally. It depends. I like on my Pixel C, it resets about every ten minutes. What? I don't. I don't know why. Mine yeah, doesn't. It's... Mine's really reliable. So there's two different ways to get it on your device. Oh, I did um, the over the air. Okay, I did an OTA. Yeah, you can sign up for the beta program. The the new thing is to sign up for the beta program, which is super easy. Like you go to this website and you hit enroll, yeah. and Google like instantly pushes you an OTA for the beta. Uh, and I did that on my Pixel C, and it was super unstable. So I don't really? know. I'm gonna try. I'm here's the, here's the site, by the way. It's google.com slash android slash beta. And yeah. uh, you just push the button, and you can see I've enrolled both my Pixel C and my 6P. It'll show you your eligible devices that you have attached to that account. Uh, I have a bunch of devices that haven't shown up in there, but my Nexus 6 showed up three times. So <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> hmm. I, don't, I don't know how that works. It really wanted you to upgrade. <laughs> yeah, but, but once you get it installed, you get split screen and a new notification panel. Um, and tons and tons of under the hood uh, improvements to dig through. I really, and, uh, uh, I really like it. I love the uh, the com the compact notifications where it pushes them all into. Uh, what's nice? Well, here you can see I have my chat room on uh, my notifications, and so these would be multiple notifications. But when I tap it, 
Uh, actually, this didn't do, do it in this case, but on some of now, them, when if you, you it's if you pull down on them, they'll, oh, you pull they'll down expand. on it, then you get the other ones. Okay, but those aren't bundled. But these aren't bundled, so I just yeah. screwed it up for you. But um, yeah. it's 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 nice. I also love the um, the new. Uh, we call it. Uh, it's not a hamburger. We call it a grilled cheese. So if you if you've got multiple <laughs> programs running and you press and hold the uh, recents button, right? It, it turns into a well, open open something first. Oh, I have to have something open. Okay, now do it. There you go. There you go. And it turns into the grilled cheese, which is a double button, and it shows me on the it splits the screen. By the way, this is resizable, which I really like. So I could have the chat room open here, and uh, and then pick from one of my other. Let's have Google Plus open here, and I mean this is this is what the this is probably the single most important feature that was missing from the Pixel C. This makes. The Pixel C pretty good. Yep. Yeah, definitely. It's really nice on the uh, uh, less useful on a phone, probably, right? Uh, actually, one of the things I found there's besides that feature, there's another one that lets you kind of zoom out the display. You, you can set the the kind of overall size of Android. Yeah. And if you I have if you have a really big phone with these features now, big phones become like more useful because. When the Nexus 6 first came out, it was this giant six-inch screen, but all that happened was Android got bigger. Right. You didn't <laughs> see more of Android. Right. Uh, and now with these settings, you can actually do more with your big screen, which is surprisingly useful. That's, that's why I have it on the gigantic. Yeah, because you have the Gigantor tablet. Shamu. Phone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, here's a, a Nexus 5 and this giant. Look how big that thing is compared wow. to Wow. <laughs> it huge. looks like a she's big. That's nice. So you change the DP. Is, I don't, is it a DPI setting? It's like a DPI setting. The, yeah, that's what it is. They surface that. Okay. But it's it's limited to like you can zoom out one level, uh, which is not a ton. Um, and you can zoom in a bunch if you like have trouble seeing. You can make everything super big. Uh, but it's it's very cool that they finally surfaced that. It was it was a super popular mod that people would do if they right. like rooted their phone or whatever. It feels like almost some of this stuff is stuff that uh, Google learned from the mod community. It's like, oh, you like that? Uh, I love the summaries now you get in the um, uh, system settings, so that you kind of you you don't have to dig into the settings to see like for instance which Wi-Fi is selected. Uh, what my brightness is right now, uh, how many, you know, what my ringer volume is. All of that is very handy. I mean, the only reason I'd ever open storage was to see how much storage I have left. Well, now I see it without up actually going into it. So where do I, is it display that I can change the uh, DPI? Yeah, display size, there it is. Display size, as opposed to font size. And then um, I have uh, four settings, so I press plus. Oops. It's it's thinking about it. It's yeah, it's thinking about it. And is <laughs> yeah. it change, is it changing both windows? It is. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. I mean, for a large screen phone or a, a tablet. What's great is both those windows are active windows. Like you can I scroll know. up on one and and I down know. on the other simultaneously. I know. It's not like iOS where it's like one kind of goes passive and one goes <laughs> active. No, this is exact. Boy, on a tablet, uh, this is awesome. Now, so it looks like most of what's new in Android, and at least. Is, is UI. I don't know what's under the hood, but a lot of new UI stuff. Um, I love, uh, and I think it was uh, J.R. Raphael who pointed this out. He said, there's two features I really like that nobody ever talks about. One is the ability to, to switch context very rapidly. You double tap the Recents button, and it'll bring up the last app you used. Just boom. Mm -hmm. um, so you can, you can just switch context like that. I think that's that is actually a really nice feature. Oh, and, okay, cool. It's yeah, alt tab. <laughs> yeah, and then if you if you're in um, multiple, um, you know, you're in recents and you have multiple, you can like alt tab between them by just hitting it once. You can see what you're different. And by the way, these are bigger thumbnails than before, so this is great. I mean, I have to say, and unlike you, you see, I've been using it. I haven't had any crashes at all on my uh, Pixel. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, mine. I don't know. Something's wrong with mine. I'll, I'll have to mess with it. it uh, mine might be. Pre-release from Google? I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't. I we no we need to do some I got special it. debugging for Ron. I got it when it came <laughs> out on Wednesday, so maybe. Yeah, I couldn't complete setup. It it just keeps it just keeps rebooting. We should so. mention that you can opt out. Of course, you can unenroll the a device, but you should be aware that it will wipe your data. It will it will <laughs> just basically reset your phone back to the yeah. latest stable release. So, uh, don't do this unless you're willing to do that. 
Well, and especially if people have been using a Pixel C, it seemed like a lot of the feedback on those reviews was, we wish we had better Windows management. Right. So it's kind of nice that this is providing that sort of features, you know, in some sort of form pretty early on so that people can be using it while they're testing I'm it thrilled. and get an idea of what's coming. Yeah, I'm thrilled. We also saw a rumor, I don't know if you saw this, uh, <laughs> I won't ask you to comment, Matt, <laughs> uh, that there would be like windows, like separated windows coming out. At some point, I don't know if that's N or if that's something special for the Pixel C. Did you see that, Ron? Yeah. So in the in the Android N uh, developer docs, it mentions a freeform window mode, um, where yeah, which is basically going to be. It sounds a lot like kind of like what Remix OS is, where it's like Android with kind of free floating app windows um, that you can move around with, I guess, a mouse and keyboard. Kind I don't of, know. Kind of silly. I asked Ron if he saw it when, in fact, the article was. <laughs> by Ron that I read. Yeah. I, I yeah. didn't note that. Of course you know about it. Um, That's how I found yeah. out about it. <laughs> it's, He's good it's about weird. digging I, through things. Yeah. yeah. I, I try sometimes. I don't know. See, this was this was dumb. I All of this stuff comes out all at once, and there's no way to, to dig through it all, and you just kind of post whatever you find. Right. So I, like, decompiled the operating system to find <laughs> this reference to Freeform Windows, and people are like, it's in the docs. You dummy. <laughs> you don't have yeah. to reverse engineer it. <laughs> That's um, funny. But, yeah, after I posted that, I, I somebody linked me the docs things, and I'm like, oh, okay. But So the thing is, like, why would you do this? Um is it is it desktop Android? Like, is this the first step? Because it it doesn't make a ton of sense on phones. It's kind of weird on tablets without a uh, without a mouse. Right. So, are are we seeing the first step toward the the rumored desktop operating system? Mm. I I would be very happy, frankly, uh, to have that on the you Pixel can stop C. using Windows. Yeah, well, I already did that. <laughs> You just make me want to buy a Pixel C, Leo. Yeah. The, by the way, if you're a developer, 25% oh, yeah. off on the Pixel C right now. Also broken no, by Ron. <laughs> no, no. If you say you're a developer, they do no... Uh, if no, you're I a developer, <laughs> nudge, nudge. <laughs> or, got Matt Cutts sitting right there. You can't say these things. You gotta oh, go. okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm I, just kidding. I, <laughs> I'm sure everyone who clicks that box has done at least a few Hello World programs. Exactly. You know, who isn't you a, have developer? Ever been a developer? Yeah, yeah. We're all developers in some sense. Learn development. It, it, yeah. That's a good point, right? I'm learning. I want to learn development. I have multiple projects in various stages of development. Yeah. yeah. Most right. of them, you know, <laughs> include headers.h. <laughs> done <laughs> so uh so and so at 25 percent off it gets down to like three what is it where is it here is it here 375 375 that's good yeah so that's... you could basically get the keyboard for free the keyboard's another 150 bucks still yeah. i think i have never uh, unlike many in fact unlike most in fact okay let's say everybody but me never regretted purchasing the pixel c i really like it um and i love that Get the get the hard keyboard, you know, the one that has the big magnet in it. I love that. It's such a such a nice system, uh, and it fits just right in my man bag. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I had to get a bigger. I'm going to write a blog post on uh, the pr uh, searching shopping for man bag <laughs> because I have now become a full convert to carrying a purse, and uh, and one of the reasons is. Because you can, a tablet, you know, these little computers, or you could be a Surface maybe or something, mm -hmm. uh, will fit so nicely in a small, relatively small uh, bag. And um, and then you got it with you all the time. And this is a, it's not a desktop computing environment, but there's so much stuff on Android. There's so many, I could see why, as much as I love the Chromebook, I could see why Google might say, well, if we're really going to do something like this, it probably should be Android. I mean, look at all the apps. A lot more apps. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, by the way, not using the Google Launcher, as you probably figured out. I'm using uh, Nova Launcher, which is my favorite. But uh, mm -hmm. it works. Uh, it, people look at my desktop and they go, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm ADD. That's what's wrong. You have wrong. it organized nicely. <laughs> but I can tell. This yeah, is my music good. page, right? You know? Nice. And the nice thing about Nova is you save these, and then you just apply it to the next device. So it's not like I have to go oh. through this each time. Oh, that's um, smart. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's there's a big Google Plus uh, <laughs> widget, widget giant. I don't know if I really will keep that. This normally has a widget. I think I must have erased, but accidentally released the uh, widget there. And it's amazing though. The the Pixel C came out in 
December. So it was three months ago, four months ago. Like you guys couldn't wait three, four months so that we could kind of see that, oh, this is what's going to happen. And that it's, it, it seems like it came out just way too early before the software was ready for it at all. So come on, Matt, tell us the truth. Was it you, Ron, who, who I think it was that had the story that uh, this is what really happened? <laughs> right. Um, that it started. At, yeah, the, there were references to the Pixel C board in the Chrome OS repository for a bit, and then that kind of went away, and then Android came out. So yeah, it, it was, it was weird. I don't know. Uh, it was uh, the story was uh, Ron wrote it. Of course, the Pixel C was probably never supposed to run Android, and you have I think extremely strong uh, evidence that uh, this you know starting in 2014 this Ryu board. Um, was designed for a particular kind of new hybrid OS. That got canceled, the Chrome OS, uh, Touch Chrome OS got canceled. And then they did Project Athena, which was, you know, I mean, there's you could see the steps, and I think you documented it quite well. So, Matt, I wouldn't expect you to confirm or deny, <laughs> particularly. Well, and as a, as a search guy, I don't have any insight you don't into know. that okay. sort of back and forth anyway. But so. then the Franken board. And I, you know, it might have been rushed to get the Pixel C out. Remember, they announced it. Uh, was it was it at the Nexus? It was at the Nexus launch event. The Nexus, yeah, six and six P and five X launch event. They said, right, yeah. look at this. Ooh, it's cool. And then in nothing. And then all it was again. It was I think it was during Twig. All of a sudden, it's on sale, and I ordered one immediately. <laughs> and and uh, so did so did Jeff. And he's had a little problem with his, but he got his replaced, and it's working. Uh, it wasn't starting for some reason. Um, yeah, December 8th it went on sale. And some saw, thought, lot, the reviewers seemed to think that maybe it was premature, that there wasn't, a, that Android wasn't the right OS for this. But I, I've been very happy um, using it as just an Android tablet. Yeah. Why well, not? I don't know exactly, yeah, why they moved up the in beta. Uh, you know, some people said... If the end beta is available, then developers have more of a chance to play with it and get ready for right. it. And also OEMs might have more of a chance, which is also kind of nice. Yes. But it's also a nice side benefit that it, it helps the Pixel C because now you've got better Windows management. So that's, you know, three good reasons right yeah. there. I'm thrilled. Well, I think I have, I'm going to give you another reason, I think. Uh, and Ron would probably disagree, but it's surprisingly stable. It feels like the, there also might have been the calculus. Hey, you know what? This is actually pretty done. It's pretty good. It may not be done, but it's good enough to put it out there where people aren't going to be saying it crashes every five seconds, except for Ron. Uh, <laughs> and, it, is, uh, it is plenty stable on my Yeah, on your my six phone. is fine, For right? My, just, yeah, just, I don't know. Something's wrong with redo, my read Redo the Pixel, because I, I have yeah. this has been rock solid. And the only issue I've had is that some apps um, either give me an error, throw an error, and then continue on, I think I had one app error out. I can't remember which app that was. Uh, it wouldn't run. It might have been Waze. Waze has been flaky lately. Well, I had Waze uh, dying on my Nexus 5X. Yeah. So, yeah. Waze, you know, I think there was a a, a, sys or a Nexus or a security update, and then, you know, that was getting Waze. some errors. Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. they fixed that. I but. took Waze off of my 6P because every five minutes it would say Waze has crashed. I wasn't even running it. <laughs> And it was wow. like, right, ways has crashed. <laughs> What's going on there? Yeah. yeah, and I don't use it enough. That I mean, Google Maps has a lot of the ways information in it now. You know, it's interesting. My car, which uses, I have an Audi that has Google Earth uh, tied in. It must be tied in live because it's got T-Mobile, uh, a T-Mobile SIM in the car. It's wow. now giving me ways style. It told me there was an accident ahead. Nice. Thought, wow. It must have. It must be getting ways data. So it's That's Google cool. Earth, not Google Maps. Isn't that weird? It's it's Audi. it's yeah. Google Max functionality. I mean, it does turn by turn, and I see streets, and uh, but they say Google Maps on it, and it does have the satellite view that is, I think, Google Maps satellite view. I'm not sure what the mm -hmm. difference is, really. But yeah, no, I've I've been digging through these uh, these car infotainment systems, and they're completely insane. So yeah, that that was some weird like custom <laughs> thing that Audi and Google made i guess but it it works it, it's just like before android showed up with smartphones where you have all these all these weird operating systems that like some some dude made at the car yeah, company yeah. and threw it on yeah. the the car and will never be updated again yeah i'm pretty sure but, it's uh, qnx uh, qnx so probably it's at least a decent os it's a real-time real yeah. os 
Made by BlackBerry now. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird. Well, and it's it's also interesting because everybody talks about the self-driving cars. And sometime this week I saw an article that said the newest Honda Civic has, you know, like yeah. the automatic lane assist and the automatic cruise control. And so you're starting to see these features, you know, and it also, this is, I wish Jeff were on the show. I think it also has both Android Auto and uh, an Apple CarPlay or whatever their system is called. So Honda does. You know, In fact, one of our... I meant to tell Jeff that because one of our guys bought a Civic, and it has both, and he's very happy with it. So I meant yeah, to yeah, my buddy has a 2016 Accord, and it'll yeah. do. It, it does lane. It will try to steer, but we're talking about lane guidance by cameras looking Ooh. down at the road to see paint. Like yeah. the difference between that and a real self-driving car with like lidar and all that stuff is is completely different. Sure, but yeah, it's nice to see it start to trickle into the market a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. My Audi does that. It's called lane assist. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, you can see that it's seeing the paint. And actually, I it, what it told me is how often I veer into... <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm an old man. Because uh, what it does is it vibrates the steering wheel. Uh, uh -huh. And it, it, it's like you're going over bots dots. It goes... Brrr, and even though there's kind of virtual dots. And it goes... Uh -huh. brrr, and so you go back. And I think it, I think it will, in addition, pre-tension the seatbelts, begin to brake and things like that. It also, if a car pulls in front of me, it will jam on the brakes. Mm. Even if ad yeah. I have a si adaptive cruise control, which is really good for stop-and-go traffic. You just turn it on and you sit back. And the, you still have to steer. But the, <laughs> but the car will, will keep a distance between the car in front of it. And if the car in front of it stops, it stops. It's mm. pretty amazing. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting yeah, there. Slowly. Uh, you know, these are only in the very high end cars at this point. Although, if the Accord has it, that's a good sign. It's the Civic. Awesome. The Honda Civic. I well, mean, he's got car. I don't think he has the, uh, all of that stuff, but he has the CarPlay. I was talking about the CarPlay and the, oh, okay. the yeah. Android Auto. Well, and the yeah. Civic the Civic does have an Android Auto and the CarPlay. Yeah, which and, is great. Yeah. And the you know lane following. It does. As well. Oh, nice. Yeah. The new one. Well, does. yeah, that's the basic model, right? Yeah, that's great. Yep. We're getting there. That's the way it's going to sneak in, uh, is just you get more, you know, bit by bit. They, they kind of start to take over more and more. And you get, you get the part of it is just to, uh, for the human to get more confident in the ability of the car. Yeah. To, uh, that is terrifying. Yeah. The, I, I tried Tesla's um, auto driving thing, which they were demoing in New York City. Like, you want to talk about terrifying. <laughs> wow traffic on like the new york city boulevards or whatever and and yeah there's a video were you on the like the, the west side highway or something it was like crazy yes yeah it, it was is that the west side highway it, you're driving down it and like the trade center is right yeah like center yeah know, wherever that's okay yeah and and yeah there's a video somewhere online of me just you know screaming it as looked the horrifying. Car drives. It's so <laughs> down a new york city road oh but you didn't get in an accident, did you? How hard is it, though, not to grab the wheel and jam on the brakes? Oh, yeah. It's really it's hard. Like it's of muscle, muscle memory that you're trying yeah. to, to turn yeah. off. It, it, will, <laughs> it will take some time for us to get used to this whole notion. But, or maybe less time than we think. I don't know. It is, it is a very, um, uh, I think, relaxing prospect to have just the car come get you, take you home. We'll all have chauffeurs in the future. Yeah, that'll be great. Our robot chauffeurs. Yeah. Uh, right. Let's see what else. I'm gonna jump into the uh, fabulous document that Jason Clanthus has prepared for us, with a list of all the stories I'm gonna forget to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that that Google uh, introduced a transparency report for itself regarding HTTPS. So the the top line stat is now seventy seven percent of all the traffic to and from Google is now encrypted, which is you know that's good progress right there. That's amazing progress. Yeah. And, that, some, and of that includes, that, some of that is let's let's encrypt, right? Uh, I, I think this is it's not. This particular one is strictly Google. Oh, um, and, and you guys includes, are using think, Google certs, not. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Because Google is and a cert is, certificate authority, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. And, and Let's Encrypt is fantastic. I think they just had like a million certificates go out. Um, but, uh, you know, for the for the Google numbers, I think it's something like they count 
almost everything soup to nuts, like even mobile API calls and stuff like wow. that. So to get to 77% of everything being encrypted when you're talking to Google makes it that much harder for a neighborhood cafe or your boss or an ISP or a government to spy on you. So Yeah, we, I mean, uh, I had mixed feelings about, you know, Google uh, last year started saying, you know, you're gonna, not going to show up uh, as well on search results and eventually Chrome is going to ding you if you don't do HTTPS. And I, you know, I kind of, there's, <laughs> I understand why it's a good idea and it should have, a, 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 HTTPS should be everywhere. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if it, we don't even have a, you know, there's no login to our site and you don't even download podcasts from our site. You download them from somewhere else. Really, it's a, it's a read-only site. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if somebody did a man in the middle, I don't know what, I mean, I guess they could put malware on it, but um, we did it. I did it. I bit the bullet and did it. <laughs> What the hell? Well, you talk I think to a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people probably think of it like Google is like using some big club trying to urge people, and it's it's much closer to a series of gentle behavioral nudges. Like in Gmail, if you email somebody and it's not going to be encrypted, uh, then you'll see a little red lock that's open. So it just knows, you know. Yeah, that's fine. Just these little tiny. Cues I don't mind that. Kind of push people towards better safety and security. They so. did say, and I think you'll start to see this uh, later this year, that pretty soon it's going to start looking worse and worse if you're on a non-encrypted site. Like there'll be sure. bigger X's and yeah. it'll look scary. Uh, but, but if you think about it, a lot of energy that used to get wasted on things that weren't as useful, people are now spending on things like making their site faster or right. or like Let's Encrypt, where you've got free SSL and that's now making you can a big make difference. That process. There's, yeah. There's yeah, very little too reason. Much trouble. Yeah, not yeah. to at this point. Since uh, Let's Encrypt basically not only gives you a free cert, but it has a script that will automatically install it on an Apache or Nginx site. Not IIS yet, but uh, <laughs> that means that most sites it's as simple as you push a button and this because that was it wasn't merely the cost uh it was right. th it was the engineering involved right and you know i still have a site the tech guy lab site the radio site which is not https uh it's running on nginx i should probably look into uh, uh getting that um a, a cert it could still be simpler, but I'm, I'm glad to see, you know, the collective will of everybody on the Internet pushing things towards less friction, less headache, less hassle to get those certificates installed. Well, of course, with this debate, uh, this Apple Department of Justice debate, I think um, awareness of the importance of encryption is really, uh, I bet you it's 100 percent greater now than it was yeah. of a month ago, right? Yeah. The the 77 percent thing is interesting because I I always picture Google services as like your data is online somewhere and, and you're going to go access it. So like, of course, all that would be encrypted. But like, what's left? What are the Google things that are not encrypted? Yeah, well, and there's some like news. Uh, it, it, a lot of the big trend was uh, advertising. So it was like 10% in uh, January of 2014. And now something like 77% of all the advertising is encrypted with SSL. And so for a while, people said, oh, we, we don't feel comfortable going to SSL because we don't know that the ad networks will work. Right. And so those sometimes those were bringing up the tail end. But even there, uh, there's really good progress. Tell so. us why, in simple terms that everyone can understand, it's a good thing for everything to be HTTPS. I mean... Use if you want my the you know our website where there's there's no login, there's no purchases, there's no data being transferred. It's just a it's like a brochure, a read only site. Why should that be encrypted? Do you want to go, Ron, or do you want me to take? No, a stab it's out? yours, Matt. No. It's yours. No. Okay, it's, I'm giving this well, to you. I, uh, the big one would be the man in the middle attacks. You know, it, you might include some JavaScript from another site, and then someone can basically interject themselves in between and give you malicious JavaScript. And we we saw that with like, uh, I forget if it was like the Great Firewall of China or something, where they were where they were adding extra things to the JavaScript that would cause a denial of service attack against other sites. And so even things like where you know when you're getting your cookies and stuff like that, and you might think that. Well, the other thing is, you know, you don't want your ISP interjecting ads, you know, if you type in a domain name that right. doesn't exist or, or, you know, it's better to have all of those channels encrypted so that you know it and whoever you're talking to knows it, but nobody in between knows it. You don't, you know, necessarily want to have those, those things where somebody knows, oh, they, they go to Windows Weekly and so they probably have a Windows device. So that's how I would attack Leo or something right. like that. Right. Um, 
just all those things add up. And if you're on an open Wi-Fi access spot, which you shouldn't be without protection, but if you are, uh, then the man in the middle could be from the guy sitting, you know, across from you. Yeah. Fire sheep. Yeah. Or yeah. your neighborhood cafe. That was the that was the revelation that got uh, Facebook <laughs> to uh, do HTTPS was Fire Sheep, which allow you could run run Fire Sheep on Firefox, and sit in the cafe, sniff the traffic going on around you. If you saw somebody was on Facebook, you could grab their token, the the cookie that Facebook uses to say, oh, you've already logged in. Yeah, I know you're you, and you could sit there and be on their Facebook page and start posting stuff. And I think that that demonstration. I remember when Steve Gibson uh, saw Fire Sheep. He was he said, "This is the greatest thing ever." I said, "Steve, this is horrible." He says, "No, this is going to force everybody to use HTTPS," oh. and he was mm -hmm. right. I mean, that that I think was a single data point that that finally got Facebook to do uh, secure. Yeah. Right. Sometimes things have to break before they right. get better. You know, right. like you know the Snowden news. Everybody's like, "This is terrible." I was like, "This is yes, it is terrible, but it means everybody's right. going to be a lot more serious about security." So that's a good thing. <sighs> Except for the president, but that's another story. <laughs> God, <laughs> he really let me down. I tell you, um, he's been. You know, I'm a Democrat. I voted for Obama. I contributed to his campaign. I'm a big supporter and. And uh, and uh, I feel like he's been, in general, a good president. And, of course, no president, no politician is going to give you 100%. You're never going to score 100% with anybody because you're going to do something some, uh, somebody doesn't like. But I'm very disappointed that uh, he was at South by Southwest doing, saying good things, really good things, saying, uh, this was on Friday, you know, help us, tech community, make government more efficient, more responsive, more transparent, uh, it's going to take you and your coding abilities and that, you know, feel good message and everybody sign them up. And then at the end, in the Q&A, the, the moderator says, well, what about this uh, Apple phone thing? And he just he just ruins the whole thing. <laughs> he says, we've got to stop <laughs> fetishizing these phones. Why? They shouldn't be private encryption. We can come to a compromise. And that, as you probably, as everybody who's watching knows, because I've gone off on off on this a couple of times. Uh, there is no compromise when it comes to encryption. It's just not, uh, it's math. It's not a compromise. There's no two plus two equals four uh, or five or maybe six. I don't know. Could it be three? No, it always <laughs> equals four, period, <laughs> period. Did you see the John Oliver segment? On yeah, encryption? I didn't, but everybody's raving about this. Was it good? Yeah. It, it was great. And that's the one to send to your regular friends mm -hmm, as opposed mm -hmm. to your techie friends because he goes through all the points and then it says, well, what about other countries? You know, what if we have to weaken it for, you know, oppressive governments? And it, I, I, to fit in that much nuance into 22 minutes is a pretty impressive feat. So that's a good one to send out. Yeah. Um, and I think what's I hope this has become clear. We'll see because Apple's going to do an event on Monday in which they will give. This is like their closing arguments, their last chance to say something before the judge rules on Tuesday. Probably will rule against them. I'm guessing will rule against them, and then it'll be appealed and it'll go to the Supreme Court, and we'll see what happens there. But uh, it's it's Apple's last chance to really. I think Tim Cook really kind of uh, figured out the angle on this is that if encryption is weakened in any way it's it reduces our security it does not improve our security so anything you do in this one case that solves this one question will inevitably have repercussions that will weaken our security across the board and if people get that i think that congress which ultimately will have to make or not make a law about this we have a shot. We have a shot that maybe Congress will 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 go. Oh, yeah, this is bad for public safety. It's just very simple. This is it's a bad idea for public safety. If if law enforcement has a backdoor in encryption of any kind, it's bad for public safety. And I'm sure this is Google's. I know this is Google's point of view uh, as well. Well, and I love that that Tim Cook has basically decided to make privacy a cornerstone it's of Apple's. Thing message yeah, and yeah. philosophy and yes they're marketing but uh, good on apple that's fantastic it's you know that's a, the ultimate pro user stance to to you know really concern yourself with privacy and security and i think 
Google tends to think more about the security aspect of it, and Apple has been lately emphasizing the privacy aspect of it, but both of those together are a fantastic thing. And I, I hope Tim talks about it, you know, as much as he can, and I hope that all the companies in the tech industry continue to file these amicus briefs and those sorts of things. Yeah. So. Did Google file can, an amicus brief? I'm sure they did. Uh, I think a lot of companies came all together to file as yeah. one, and I believe Google was part of that. Yeah. So yeah. You, you probably can guess how I feel personally about this. So, you know, <laughs> take me with a grain of salt. Ron, how do you feel about this? <laughs> I think yeah, everybody go, is in agreement. <laughs> Strong. Yeah, we shouldn't have encryption. What a bad idea. <laughs> no, no encryption anywhere. Um, it's You know, I, I agree, and I'm, I'm, I'm full agreement with the president and law enforcement um, that uh, in order, you know, that, that a search warrant should allow law enforcement to search. Uh, if it's, you know, there's probable cause and a court orders it, that's how it works in this country. And uh, un until now, it was, the human brain was the only place ex exempt from that. The Fifth Amendment said you can't be compelled to testify against yourself. And courts deemed that, well, that meant that, you know, we can't read your mind. Um, we can't force, compel you, for instance, to give up a password because that would be self-incrimination. Um, but the problem is once encryption existed, once public key crypto became known, and it's a simple concept that ha once understood, can many, many coders can write encryption routines. It's not hard. Um, that, that did change the equation. And while I understand why law enforcement doesn't like that idea, there's nothing you can do about it at this point. You can't, you can't put the horse back in the barn. Bad guys will have encryption. And if you weaken encryption in a misguided attempt to make it uh, easier to do your job as law enforcement, and I'm all for them doing their job as law enforcement, the problem with that is you weaken it for everybody. And, uh, and, and, that's, and we know that from history. I mean, this isn't even something we haven't tried before. We tried to block strong encryption exports, and all it did was cause a security problem which has lasted 20 years and has only now been kind of fixed, the 40-bit uh, SSL uh, browser. So uh, I think we it's, it's not even any question in anybody who's really dug into this. I don't think there should be any question in anybody's mind. And while the president wants compromise, because he's a politician and that's the art of politics, is the art of compromise and negotiation and working it out, there's no compromising with the fact that the math is out there. I think it's just, it's done. It's nothing you can do about it. Um, all right, enough said. It'll be very interesting to see what Tim Cook says. This will be, like I said, closing arguments for Apple on Monday. Yep. And I, 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 while no one knows and we've even debated whether he'll do this, I would be shocked if he didn't take the first 15 minutes of Apple's presentation to make that case as strong as he, as he can. Uh, Instagram wants to uh, do the same thing Facebook's been doing and Twitter has said it will do, which is to start showing pictures out of order what do you think about that algorithmic feeds ron are you a pro or a con uh, i'm a not i'm abstaining i'm a non-instagram user really i, well, I don't you must really use do, twitter i don't really do instagram or facebook i do do twitter I, and yeah I, I mean i do twitter with like tweet deck and all these crazy yeah, you so know they don't... stream twitter apps right um so they don't pay no, attention to what Twitter everything. does. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I right. I want to see everything. I, I really don't need you doing some weird right. algorithm thing, it, at least on Twitter, because that's the point of that is kind of real time. Uh, Instagram, I don't use, but I mean, it's pictures. I don't I doubt anybody feels as strongly about Instagram as they do Twitter. For, what do you, for what do you think? What do you think, stuff. Matt? Uh, I, I think people tend to be change averse. You know, everybody was <laughs> so angry when Twitter changed from stars to hearts. And now everybody's like, whatever, click the heart, you know. So, uh, you know, as long as they're relatively reasonable about it and things don't show up from four years ago and, and you know, they, they could start it out slow and turn the dial up slowly. You know, it seems seems like I wouldn't want to miss a great picture just because I happen not to be online when it streamed through. So, you know, power to you, Instagram. Let's see what happens. What they realize is that uh, people I kind of do this when I go to Instagram I go until I see until I get to a pictures I've seen before and they go okay I've seen everything right um, but they realize most people don't do that they say in fact now on average 70% of your feed people miss they like go back a few pictures 
Uh, Twitter was the same problem, right? I never could catch up with Twitter. That's, you know, that's crazy yeah. talk. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, but what you get used to is you go, well, I uh, Twitter's not a uh, content feed uh, in which you try to read the thing cover to cover. It's a, it's a river of stuff that you dip into uh, ad hoc whenever you have in the mood. And what you get is what you get at that moment. On the other hand, I kind of, so I didn't like the idea of the chronological, of removing the chronological feed uh, on Twitter. But I, actually, in hindsight, I think they did it well. Uh, what you might have missed, and you can very quickly get back to chronological, and I kind of like it. So I, yeah, I've come around. I, I'm, I'm a believer in the, in the modified feed. I don't know about Facebook. Facebook's so opaque as to what they're doing. See, Twitter, you kind of know. This is stuff you might have missed. Yeah, I'm, I presume Instagram will be kind of like that. That's the way to do it: is say, hey, here's a here's a few photos from people you like that you might have missed, and now back to your feed. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, Facebook's weird about how. They do that, and they charge for promotion for stuff. So there's there's like this weird conflict of interest of, of how they how they do their algorithm versus how they you know extract money out of I don't know big accounts and all that. Right. Yeah, Facebook is just it uh, it's opaque. It's random. It doesn't. And it's funny because I think people who use Facebook are exactly the kind of people who say, "But I want to see all of Aunt Maud's posts in order." That's why I'm on Facebook. <laughs> I want to know what my kids are up to. Oh, well. <laughs> of all the people not to do it, uh, right. Uh, okay. I thought I could stir up some controversy, but we're all in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> we're all pretty mellow about that. Yeah. Um, it's pictures. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Let's talk about Google in court. <laughs> Russia. Google <sighs> has lost its appeal. Uh, Google, as you know, it's kind of complicated. Maybe Ron could explain it better than I. Even though Android is open source and there is the Android op uh, open AOSP project. Right, Android open source project. Which is just Android without any Google stuff. If you right. want to make an Android phone with Google stuff, you have to include all the Google stuff. Is that right? Right, yeah. Usually it's uh, th there's a there's a package that you kind of have to take of all the Maps, Google Play Gmail, apps. Google it, it's Search, not all of them, the but it's most store. of the Google Play yeah. apps. Yeah, yeah. Google's and and you have to give a uh, preferential placement to Google Search and um, some other stuff. You know, you have to bundle pretty much all the Google services. That always struck me as fair. Uh, Google gives away Android. Anybody can build an Android phone that wants to. Look what app Amazon done. They took has done. They took the Android source code, you know, customized it, modified it, put the uh, Amazon App Store on it, and shipped it out. Didn't cost them a penny. Uh, and then if they wanted to make an Android device that's Google Android, which is what I think most users want for a phone anyway, um, you you include the Google app. But I don't want to buy a phone that doesn't have Google Apps. Uh, the Google App Store or Google Search or Google Maps. When you don't you want that? Well, Yandex didn't want it. Yandex is uh, Google Search in Russia. Well, they're no, Google's competitor, search competitor in Russia, and uh, they uh, went to court saying uh, that for Google to require phone manufacturers to put Google Apps in um, is uh, is uh, monopolistic. Hmm. And so they the courts agree. So they want they want the Play Store without any of the extra Google apps. Is that the ruling here? Um, because I mean, you you could just not take the Google apps like it's optional. You, you don't could, have to take them at all, right? The same thing like Kindle. I don't like it. So the they I mean, they want I they want like, manufacturers to be able to cherry pick. So they want a manufacturer to make an Android phone and say, well, we'll put Maps in but not App Store, or I want App Store but not Maps. And that's, by the way, that's what the court ruled. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I feel like Google saw this Microsoft thing happen, and then they designed Android specifically ah. to kind of get around that kind of argument where here, here's the source code. You can take it and do whatever you want. And, and I don't know, to have them still come back and – and say that they want to cherry pick from the Google apps is weird. I mean, they they work together half the times. So like you have to include Google Play services because well, that, precisely. It's it's not designed to be unbundled right. really. So I don't know how that's going to work. Google's going to have to rewrite or something. And of course, the larger concern is that the EU may follow suit. Uh, 
and they've made some noises that they are considering that. Yeah, the yeah. EU, they they have some serious like they personal like hatred of Google over there. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with they them. I don't like Google over there. <laughs> Which is funny because uh, Google isn't even close to a monopoly in the U.S. I can't remember what the percentage is. Is it 70%, 60% of all searches? 60 or something. It's low. It's like 80% in Europe. It's it's very high. They're much more of a monopoly in Europe. Um, mm. I don't know why that is. I guess they don't like Bing in France either. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is the other choice? Uh, it's well, Bing. Yeah, yeah, there's Bing, there's Yandex, there's Baidu, says Nam. I know, understand in DuckDuckGo. I understand if you're in, <laughs> what if you're in China that uh, you would prefer a Chinese search engine or Russia you would prefer, prefer a Russian search engine. I'm I'm I have no doubt in my mind that they don't do as well as Google does, and that furthermore, at least in those two countries, they're probably heavily influenced by government interests. Did you see there was some article, I don't know, uh, talking about uh, the Volkswagen defeat device scandal and, and sort of saying there, there appeared to be a, a document leak that was, that was sort of saying some members of that particular part of the European Commission had met with somebody who was on the lobbying side. Oh, or, boy. Or the, and it was kind of like it, it, the article that I read made it, and, and maybe it's a rag, you know, blog that you can't trust, but sort of made it sound like, the the companies were able to discover how much exactly they needed to give on their exhaust ex emissions, you know, stuff. Um, you can justify that. Well, we want to uh, negotiate. We need to. Uh, wh how how far do we have to go? We'll do this. We'll talk behind doors a little bit. Mm. 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 Google is adding support for Microsoft Office, Facebook at work, Slack. Uh, to the single sign-on. Uh, well, I don't understand that. Is it Google that has to do that or those guys that have to do that? Yeah, I thought it was the other way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, oh, I guess this is two Google apps. Ah. Uh, okay. Oh, so the, you the, can the use Google apps? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so if you're using Google apps for work, you can use Google as identity provider. Stand life. It's all beyond me. <laughs> I don't know. It's too Yeah, no, Google Apps for, is it? Is it called Apps for Work now? Whatever. The, yeah, the Apps for Work. Yeah. Thing yeah. Is its own, yeah. it's kind of its own little box with like this I crazy see. extra dashboard that I I've see. tried to figure out a couple times <laughs> to, to make stuff like, like Android for work function. And it's in the same way that Exchange is like hard to, to manage, this is like its own crazy <laughs> life form that you kind of have to deal with i don't know google apps is, is hard a lot <laughs> if you're the admin if, if you're not the yeah. admin then life is right. good and exactly. well like, no hey, if I'll you're not the admin it. then you go i don't understand why i have to use my g why i can't use my gmail account with the i don't it, it's confusing mm. no it's uh, it's mm. i think it's great as long as you're not the admin as long as you have some dude <laughs> who's your full-time admin that's great right. but that's how we have russell reason. russell that's does that hard. And Russell, <laughs> is, Russell. Russell has flipped the switch so, for instance, I can use Inbox with my apps account as opposed nice. to... Nice. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's still not... I understand why Google hasn't fixed this. It's still... All, and Jeff's always complaining about, as you know, Matt, about <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about, about the, you know, the, 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 the separation between his private personal Google account and his apps email yeah. and how come he can't use his apps email for a lot of the things he uses his personal email for and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess it must be a hard computer science problem. Well, it's a fair criticism, and I, and I truthfully don't know what the inside story on that is, but it, it makes me feel like there must be some extra work to right. integrate with the Google Apps for Work, and then right. individual products are like, oh, we'll get to that later, right. whereas it feels like somewhere years and years ago someone should have done the engineering so that that worked by default for all accounts, including apps accounts, and and now maybe the genie is out of the bottle and it's too hard to get back in or something. I, I don't know exactly what the reason... Although, okay, if you're the administrator and you're not a tech-savvy person or a startup, then you do sometimes want to control how quickly you get updates and when right. functionality update happens and maybe you're in a regulated industry. And so th there are some arguments for things moving slower and not you know, surprising you with you know web downloads and here's this new feature it just turned on. But uh, I think... 
more of the complaints I hear are of Jeff's variety, where they wish apps accounts would work better. I hear that from yeah. From end users, the Google Apps end users always seem to hate that. Like the, I I totally get this slower. Oh, it needs to be slower and more stable, and your your ad, your admin guy has to you know control all mm -hmm. of this. But the users always seem to be really mad about it. Why can't I do this new thing with my Google Apps account? <laughs> I want to do the latest. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you can, for instance, they just added a, like a, a switch that the admin can throw that lets you use inbox with your Google Apps email. But they, but your administrator has to give permission, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that But that was huge. I was really glad when that happened. And I Right. And how long ago did inbox come out? That was like, I don't I know. know. It's been a couple of years, I think. We actually... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, apparently, now you can use uh, the web replies, the email replies on the web version of Inbox. Oh, I use That's... those all the time. Yeah. <laughs> people people don't understand. They said, Leo, you're so terse these days. <laughs> <laughs> but this, they're always, it's actually, there's an example of artificial intelligence being really cool. And it's probably very stupid artificial intelligence. But it's really nice because what it does is looks at the email. And then offers three choices of what your likely response would be. Yeah, right on, let's do it. Or, And it's often very colloquial. Uh, mm -hmm. No way, I don't want to do that. And then you pick that and your, your, mail, your email is answered. I, yeah, or, no, it's, I love it's it. Legit, it's like legit artificial intelligence. There was like a Google research paper about it uh, and everything. My, I, my favorite story is they, they did the inbox uh, smart reply and it would want to reply I love you to every single message uh, which is which is kind of nice like it searched some kind of database of of people talking and determined that that was a good response uh -huh. that's what people say to each other the most is I love I you, love you. So. that's a, but not to your boss you know why I say that no. I love no. you so now you but know now you know why my emails to you Jason Cleanthus are always so quick and snappy I wish Facebook Messenger would have this feature <laughs> or hang it. Do, do you tell Jason that you love him often? All enough? the time. All the time. All the go. time. That and cat pictures. Cat pictures. Lots of cat pictures. <laughs> Automated cat pictures, the best thing to ever happen to artificial <laughs> Actually, mm -hmm. speaking of uh, inbox, we talked to uh, on Monday, we had a triangulation. Uh, I don't know if you know Jeffrey Knapp. He was uh, one of the guys behind um, Priority Inbox, he also did uh, Hangouts. <laughs> And he's now at Google Ventures, and he wrote a book called Sprint, talking about. I don't. Have you ever done a Sprint, the Google Ventures Sprint? It's a five-day process um, mm -hmm. where they set up, set a goal on day one, and they, it's a team of seven people, and and it's a really cool process where they get to a prototype and testing by day five. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with that? Yeah, I've gotten to do an early version of the sprint. There, there's two authors on that book, John and Jake, and I forget. And I think Braden. I did it with Jake and Braden and, too. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, sorry, yes, three. And uh, and it's pretty cool because the, in a course of five days, they try to come up with uh, you know interesting solutions, and it, it, it's uh, it's worth checking out. The book just came out just recently. I was very so. impressed, and it, uh, while I, while I will never do it because I'm far too disorganized. Uh, I, th I thought, but well, this seems like a good idea. Somebody ought to do this, uh, but not us, <laughs> not me anyway. Um, but it looked like fun too, actually, which was kind of cool. So if you didn't see Triangulation this week, it's a, it's a good one to, uh, to watch <laughs> Sprint with Jake. So you know Jake. I mean, uh, Jeffrey. You know Jake. Uh, we, we've... We, we're acquaintances. I wouldn't yeah. say best friends, but yeah, we've yeah. we've talked to each other. It's funny because they're both really tall, uh, <laughs> and so you know if, if you if you if you're like, oh yeah, you're Jake John on Jake, yeah, Jake you, Jake, you Jake John Jake Knapp, John yep. Zaratsky, and Braden Kowitz were the yep. three uh, who worked on that sprint technology. Google's interesting that way because I have a feeling there's a lot of interesting processes that are used by various teams to, uh, you know, get to these solutions in a timely, efficient fashion. Engineers yes. love process. Yes. And in fact, if you haven't seen a book by uh, Laszlo Bach, uh, it's called Work Rules. Uh, oh. Laszlo is the head of human resources at, at Google and or people operations, whatever you want to call it. And I would say page for page, pound for pound, that book has more insights oh, about... Oh, I remember that. Yes. Yeah. The experimentation that Google's done on a lot of different white teams work and, you know, how to how to make things work well. And Laszlo is a fantastic guy in general. So um, if you pick that up and just open it to any random page, that that will probably be a pretty useful page for you, in or at least interesting about why they decided to do things that way. It's, uh, it's a 
pretty good book. Remind me, uh, uh, Jason, to, to book him for triangulation. That would be a good triangulation guest. We'll do. See if we can get Laszlo on the show. Yeah. People operations. He's head of people operations. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Are you excited about Silicon Valley coming back? You could find out what's really going on at Google. <laughs> that should be so fun. <laughs> we had so on Sunday. I don't, I don't know if you saw it, but David Pogue uh, was on tr a Twit, and uh, David, of course, is at Yahoo for as long as there is a Yahoo, running their uh, tech vertical, tech.yahoo.com. But he came to us. He was at Austin at South by Southwest, and he came to us from the roof of the W. Except the way he was seated. It, it, it looked like he was in prison, but so then he panned around and it was clear he was on a roof with a pool. And, and I said, you look like you're in Hooli in, that, in, the, in the rooftop offices of Hooli where they put people who <laughs> they don't want to fire, but they don't want to, they don't have anything for them to do. So they just sit there up on there on the roof and then after a couple hours they go, maybe let's go have lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Resting and vesting. David's yes. laughter was uh, pained. <laughs> oh, oh, Slightly God. pained. Uh, what is uh, what is this project Google's up to uh, in uh, in Mountain View? Google's project. It's the new campus. The new campus. Is that the new campus? Okay, yeah. I thought I they got turned this... down on this. Yeah, they re yeah, they is re this going to be a real thing that like exists? Yeah, they had to change the design. The campus with the tent. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, they they were trying to get. If I remember right, they were trying to get enough space approved. Right. Uh, by the the city. And some of it went to LinkedIn. Uh, so Google oh, yeah. ended up not being able to build the crazy spider web uh, city that they had envisioned originally. Um, so, so now there's... But this is a littler this, one. Yeah. This it doesn't look quite as spider webby either, but... Um, and by the way, not a tent. It's a photovoltaic integrated canopy skin. Pardon me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> Come on, you want to work there, Matt. You know you do. <laughs> that looks, the slideshow is pretty fun. You know, it some is. of those rooms look neat. It is. What's, uh, so this is the, this is the revised uh, campus. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. But this is just one building instead of like a whole massive. Yeah, there were, there were going to be three Looked like a biodome before. <laughs> right? Yeah, does it, so does this does this keep all of the things that they were originally talking about where like it's a modular design and they're going to have some kind of robot that's going to move walls around and and you know reshift areas to match whatever a given team needs. This was the is, is that, this was the original happening? one as you say it had uh it had three buildings under it. Um <laughs> Right. It really looks like a, a, a scene from Under the Dome, actually, is what it looks like. <laughs> um, oh, so they yeah. had to, they had to, the new plans now are, uh, as you said, more traditional uh, flat glass walls, but they still have the tent on the, uh, I'm sorry, what am I saying? The photovoltaic <laughs> canopy. <laughs> They need to come up with an acronym so it's spelled tent, but still has. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, I'm sorry. It's the P-I-C-S, the photovoltaic integrated canopy skin. The thermal enclosure northern something. Yeah. Thermal <laughs> enclosure. Um, hmm, we can Neutral. Come up with something. Neutral. Is it, like, is it still see-through? It just <laughs> looks like a f funny shaped roof now. In yeah. The it doesn't look quite it's as like cool. It's so thick now. Yeah. But it, it, it must be see-through because they have trees inside. They have... Here's the roller dome. I don't know what that is. <laughs> no, see, they have greenery and some kind of vegetable stand. <laughs> what is this? What is this? Is that? Is that? Do you have that in Google yet? The the push cart with vegetables. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> they try a lot of cool experiments at Google. I'm, I'm not saying they would wheel ah, the kale carts <laughs> here. Anybody want any kale? <laughs> Who wants some appetizer kale? Who <laughs> wants some kale? The carts here. Some kale shots. <laughs> <laughs> well, in in the old renders, they had people farming outside oh the building. God. This is what you do, though, when you get to be like, oh, see, in the distance, there's two more biodomes. So uh, you're right. It was three different structures. See these two in the background? This is the old plan. Oh, man. Gosh darn LinkedIn. You ruined our whole thing. <laughs> Charleston like East, this will, be, uh, this will be called. That's the old campus on the left. If we could agree on some building standards where you could dock the buildings together, oh. then the LinkedIn building could join our professional network at Google. They have those. <laughs> they have that in, or had that in Japan. The um, the hotel that would uh, you could 
press a button and, the, and a robot arm would come and move your room to another part of the hotel? <laughs> Do you know about that? No, that's awesome. <laughs> I think it was a, like a thing in the 60s wow. uh, or 70s. Um, but I don't, but I, 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 it was like some sort of modular hotel, but it was like normal sized rooms. Yeah, there it is. Here it is. The capsule hotel. <laughs> um, no, that's not it. Let's see. Uh, it was a Japan, um, uh, well, I can't find it. I, I read a wonderful medium piece, a photographer who, uh, who stayed there and he scared his girlfriend cause he. He found out that you could press a button requesting a move, which costs money, huh. uh, and then cancel it. But the arm will come, and your room will start shaking. <laughs> 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 and it won't cost you anything. So, <laughs> By the way, the chat room is listing out possible acronyms like thermal entropy networked tent and Perfect. thermal enclosure, <laughs> not tent. So. I like it recursive where it has a tent in the yes. word tent. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it it looks like these plans are actually for a different location, not the original. Oh. The original thing was going to be in North Bay Shore. I don't know if they're still. They're not actually doing any of this yet. This is like just some guy drawing. They got to get Mountain them. View to agree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That and then that's the the plans have gone in. So uh, yeah, there you go. This is their whole landscape plan and wow. layout, of the buildings, the everything. They submitted the entire plan. You got to do this. If Apple's going to have the spaceship yeah. and Facebook has the whatever that is, unfinished. Yeah, the spaceship is under construction. Like, they're going to Oh, they're close to done. They'll be done next year. In fact, okay. we're, we're yeah. thinking that, um, you know, they just put the, the roof on the uh, theater that they're going to have events in. We're thinking that Apple will start having events there maybe in, for the iPhone 8 in the fall of next year. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, Thermally we'll effective tense. negative taxonomy, I believe. <laughs> what we call that. Um, Google, actually, this is, I'm sure, one that you're up on, Matt, will start ranking mobile-friendly sites even higher yeah. come, come this May. What does that mean? Well, uh, there's a link in the rundown towards the bottom where you can click to the uh, the mobile test. But basically, oh. it's it's you know things that you would think would be kind of uh, common sense. You know, you know, you're not using images that are too big. You're, you know, it, it's got a whole checklist, and so you can type in any URL, and it will tell you whether your website is mobile friendly or not. So you could type in Google.com, and in see. fact, I think they had just uh, just done made some extra it, right? work, quick to fix make it. sure that we're mobile friendly. Does that mean uh, mobile what? responsive? What does that mean? Uh, it it th that helps a lot. You know, it, it's like a bunch of different things down a checklist that it looks right. for. And, and in fact, there's documentation on the mobile uh, friendly test page where it sort of talks about mobile SEO and those kinds of things. So you can sort of say, you know, uh, responsive hey, web design. I win. Our, yeah, our page is mobile friendly. In fact, here's how yeah. it looks on a mobile. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. That's, this is yeah. a nicely done. Uh, I'm sorry, this was going to be your thing. I just I just realized this was no, going to no, be your I, thing. I, it's totally fine. I've, I've actually got another one oh, I, I was going to do anyway. But uh, what's nice about this is, you know, last year uh, they started to, they, they, they basically said this is a little another gentle nudge to point people towards being mobile friendly. And it shouldn't right. be completely logical at this point that mobile is, is huge at this point. So just like with site speed or SSL, now we're going to give a little bit, we had been giving a boost. It'll probably be just a little bit more of a boost for sites that are mobile friendly. So if you've been thinking about it and wondering, are these phones really going to take off? You know, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's time to it's mobile to, things a fad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go straight to VR, you know, yeah. but maybe, Take a little while and optimize for mobile before you go for VR. Yeah. Um, good. Well, I'm thrilled to see that we're mobile friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tried Ars Technica and, and we passed too. I have, I have no one to yell at, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> three for three. We're good. Well, it should be. It should, I mean, yeah, three for three. You're including Google.com. <laughs> that's all the internet you need. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Google, Ars Technica, and Leo's site. Yeah, I mean, that's, I'm in that good shape. It's everything you I'm need. So. Good, that's all. All you'd ever need. Very <laughs> nice. Very nice. Uh, let's I, see. What else? Go ahead. I don't know if you saw this thing on the YouTube creator blog about blurring objects in your videos. 
I just, you know, growing up in Kentucky, I, of course, loved the television show Cops. And so... Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the, the perps the, always had blurred faces, right? Yeah. yeah. Or, or, you know... Uh, or the people behind the perp. Background, they'd yeah. have their brand, you know, blurred out. So now that functionality is available to you as no a YouTube kidding. creator. Wow. Yeah. You could do that yeah. in the web browser? I believe so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, um, and it's, it's not just like a you draw a square and that square stays permanently blocked. Like, it's object tracking. Wow. That's pretty sophisticated. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. This is another thing that's got to be like AI powered behind yeah. the scenes somewhere. Yeah. yeah. That's it's showing up everywhere. That's really neat. Although I hate videos where there's things blurred out in the background. Yeah. But you know, but you don't. If you're a YouTube creator, you don't want to have a brand in the background that didn't give permission, right. or you know. Yeah. If you failed to get permission, now instead of having to spend an hour doing something, you do like three seconds, and suddenly you're in much better shape. Which, I, I, I think it'd be fun to just play with that a little bit. Start blurring random things on the videos and see if people notice. You know, <laughs> see if you can do some hijinks. I was kind of stunned uh, at uh, Steve Chen's remarks. Uh, he was the creator of YouTube at South by Southwest. He revealed I never knew this, and I talked to Steve. I remember talking to Steve before he sold to Google in the very early days of YouTube. He never revealed that when he first started YouTube, it was supposed to be a place singles could upload videos. <laughs> talking about what they were it was a dating app what they were looking for in a partner and what a perfect name though youtube oh my it's like if you're God. dating it's like this is me this is you this is me this is you this is me and you together <laughs> what explains the, the name yeah glad to see that steve's hair is no less unruly than it <laughs> yeah. was before he was a billionaire uh steve and chad that's so cool they have a new uh, site um actually is it Steve's site uh, called Nom Nom or Nom, just Nom. <laughs> um, and uh, it uh, wants to what harness the hive mind for better cooking. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. That's cool. Okay. Looks like Pinterest. I don't know what it is. Um, I like it, that. It's all videos about food. Food videos. Yeah. Hmm. It's it, he's Steve's like me. One good idea, and we're just looking at different ways to slice it. <laughs> <laughs> How many different roundtable shows can I do? Uh, this actually looks pretty good. So it is. So it's kind of YouTube for food and recipes. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, I actually I'm into there's, food. Yeah, there's a lot of geeks who need help with cooking, and there's a lot of people out there who enjoy you know Top Chef and all those kinds of things. So. Why not? Why not? That sounds kind of neat. Food Network is uh, absolutely addictive. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's a perfect segue to the next story down the row a uh, little bit is uh, Twitch is now giving Julia Child. This is Child. just weird. <laughs> Julia yeah, Child channel on Twitch. <laughs> okay, this is how we take a chicken and cut wow. it into quarters. Wow. Right. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely before my time. Like the the thing they did before this was Bob Ross, and that was pretty cool because like he's a chill guy in painting, and it's, that it's was interesting. Neat. That was really neat. yeah. It's just cool to see him paint, but this like I don't know. You don't get to eat the food afterwards. So oh. <laughs> I grew up watching this show, The French Chef. It's a it was uh it was the really the the first cooking show on PBS, and she was a very unlikely superstar. I met her. She's very tall, was very tall, um, and every bit as kind of kooky as, as she kind of came across. This is awesome. What's great is it's very, very live. There's no... Oh, yeah. I mean, things happen. Oh, yeah. She this stuck is... a, a, a mixer, in, I mean, she stuck a spoon in a mixer last night. Yeah, yeah. And it went flying across the well, set. You've been watching set. it? You've yeah. been watching it all day, huh? I was watching it last night, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was making some sort of orange butter. No, it's totally not a... It, because nobody knew about cooking shows. She invented it. I'm purposely hiding the comment section because there's a lot of stuff coming up that's weird, but it's interesting to watch. <laughs> a, lot of the, a lot of the younger audience are like, whoa, this is so cool. <laughs> what is that? Um, yeah. Why is the video Julia black Chapman and white? <laughs> this with Twitch chat has got to be like the best thing ever. Come on. Yeah, I'm not showing it. We don't. We, we, no. uh, wow. What kind of a filter is that? Wow. <laughs> and the, the, is that XX Pro? the thing everybody uses now on Twitch is um, these avatars that are people's heads. Like there's a Bob Ross head. And I imagine there'll be a Julian Child head eventually. Mm -hmm. um, I don't get that. So do you see all the heads going by? Do you, um, do you, do you understand that uh, there, uh, Jason? Uh, you're a young person. 
Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, young person on set would be this person right here. Actually, no, you know yeah. what it is? It's cul it's a culture. It's a subculture. That's it is. And this is the thing. Like they announced, they announced YouTube gaming, and I'm like, Twitch has Twitch has all of this culture stuff that like right. YouTube gaming is is not gonna have. Like that's where that's where the community is. But but yeah, all of those emotes, they're, they're emotes, and they mean they mean something. something. Yeah. Right. They mean they all they all mean some kind of emotion. You know, the the one everybody does is Kappa, which is uh which is some guy's head. He's like a Twitch developer and he's making kind of a sarcastic face, so that's for sarcasm. And uh there's a million other ones. Yeah, if you I think if if you like really want to get into it, you can mouse over it probably and you'll get um uh you should get maybe a tooltip of the what, what it is. That's the what you, face. You can look it up and, and yeah, then there's there's, there's you know, baby rage, but that one's the what face. Uh, it's just its own set the, of the Kramer. Of the Kramer one, they call that the Pog Champ. Right. I, I know what <laughs> Pogs Pog are. Champ, Pog Champ is it's it's a guy, and there's a video somewhere. There was like a YouTube video of a guy making that expression, and right. the Twitch staff thought it was funny, so they just cut his head out and stuck it in there. And I feel so old. But yeah, you can oh, you, well, you can know like, your meme. Go go no, but, look it up. Yeah, on. but it's what happens. It's what happened in the Appalachians when you cut people off from <laughs> the rest of the world for a hundred years. They develop their own language, right. and that's what's happened on Twitch. These are people who never get outside anymore. I don't know what what, what you mean talking about. <laughs> that's so wrong. That's so wrong. It's Let's the Appalachia of the, 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 Appalachia of the internet is what it is. No, no. <laughs> but what, so what's amazing is. Um, I, I'll, I'll watch. <laughs> I'll we have watch, lost uh, Matt Cuts. <laughs> oh, man, oh. I, I will watch Hearthstone streams a lot, and um, they have their own. And probably, there's right? this one. There's this one girl. It's a uh, Eloise, so she's Chinese and has ended up learning most of her English through Twitch chat. Oh wow! <laughs> so she she has kind of been been raised and and brought up into wow. the English language through through the internet's like wow. worst possible filter of English, and it's wow. pretty awesome. <laughs> that is wild. although, frankly, if uh, if you are on Imager every day and then you go away for like three days, you come back and there's like four new things you've completely missed out on. Oh, and memes! Like, they move too fast. Yeah. The good so. news is. They don't stand on the shoulders of each other. They're all kind of this separate thing, and it goes away in a few days or months or whatever. I mean, you could still to this day say, what color is the dress, and people will know what you're talking about, but that's rare. Most yeah. of these just kind of, you're not, in other words, you can join at any time. It's kind of like, yeah. it's kind of like Twitter. You're like, what is Batman doing at 2.30 in yeah. the morning on a third there's Tuesday? No, you can look it up on Know Your Meme, and you'll yeah, find there's out. there's no culture there. Yep. So, um have you tried yet the uh, the pay by voice Google thing that you guys are doing in the Silicon Valley only, and in fact only at McDonald's and it's, uh, it's, pizza place? It's more, uh, I think it's more than just McDonald's now. So yeah, I had been helping with the testing of that, and it was pretty awesome. Okay, so say. okay, so we don't understand it. So here, let, so this is what we've I've read is you go up and you're at McDonald's, you got your order of fries and your Big Mac and shake, and you go. I'll pay with Google. Mm -hmm. And then what? And, what does the they, clerk and then say? They say, they what's say your what are your initials? Oh, what, rather, say, what yes. Are your initials? What are you, and you they, say MC or, or what's your name? And you say what your name is. I don't know what the latest incarnation is that's been public. But and that's all? There's, yeah, or your picture or something like that. So they can look and they can see your picture and then maybe they disambiguate with your name or your initials. Um, and uh, I so think. So the what is the, what is the clerk seeing? A picture of you? Yes. So the clerk yes. is doing the validation. The clerk's seeing your picture, and then well, no, your phone. Your phone is validation too, right? They have a Bluetooth sensor or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there's okay. actually a lot of wizardry that happens. Behind oh, the so it's more than just a picture of you and I know my name. Oh, a lot more. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. No, um, the nice thing is that it uses the proximity APIs that are sort of underneath the hood. So your phone knows that you're at this location. So it's kind of like Pay by Square used to be. Yeah, a little bit. Um, if you uh, uh, so it used to, if I had pay by square on my phone, uh, uh -huh. and I would open it, and then I would walk into the coffee shop. And we had one down the street. Uh, by prox by geofencing, it would know that I was in the coffee shop. My picture would pop up on the iPad that the clerk was using, and I and that would be it. Uh, right. Yeah, say, and I, you're Leo, right? 
Right. And I think the technology is, is maybe slightly different and slightly more accurate under the hood. Well, that was the problem the, with the geofencing was two I, stores next to each other couldn't use pay by square. You, right. had, you had to separate them enough so that you would, but this is better than geofencing. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of ways that you can actually know that you, two devices are near each other. And some of that stuff, I think, has become public. Is it Bluetooth LE you, or is it beaconing or? Uh, I don't know secret. how much it's has secret. been. Don't public, say. Okay, but, uh, so so but your, your options, your options, I could, I could give you options. Yeah, it's going to be uh, either the Bluetooth beacon stuff or like the ultrasonic pulses oh, from it could your be that. speaker that's pe picked up by we've a seen, microphone. We've seen people use that, right? Yeah. Right, that's yeah. in nearby for the Chromecast. <laughs> and some other stuff. Uh, that's that's that about it. Is, <laughs> yeah. What, is it one of those? I don't know. Uh, it, it, it's safe to assume you, you, you could do technology like that, yeah. <laughs> so, the night, uh, okay, so <laughs> the latest Penny Arcade. I love having Matt Penny on. Arcade? Yeah, love Penny Arcade. Love it. It's funny because they actually have, they talk about something like this in the latest comic strip. They basically say, uh, when you try to pay with your phone and it works, you know, and they've got one panel that's like the guy is like super sexy with a leather jacket and glasses. And then they've got when it doesn't work so good and then, you know, everything's going wrong. So I don't know if you can find that Penny Arcade <laughs> comic, but it, it's the most recent one. Uh, and when it works with just paying with your phone, you know, at the Walgreens, you're like, ah. Oh, this is fantastic. And when you pay with your voice, you're just like, it feels so cool. <laughs> and then if you pay with Samsung Pay, people go, wait a minute, come back here and give me money. Yeah, how did that happen? <laughs> how did that happen? Yeah, they, so like that, <laughs> here's the, what, here's the, what uh, weirds comic. me out, what weirds me out about this, this Google thing is it like, it requires that you train the, the, the register, the cashier on how to do this. And it's like, I don't know, you want to train all the cashiers in the world, I guess, on this new payment thing when th – that sounds really hard to me. Like, what was it, the one Samsung Pay guy got uh, got the cops called on him because yeah. I thought he was hacking the terminal? Yeah, <laughs> yeah nobody – so Samsung Pay uh, will do a tap to pay, but they also have uh, – they'll create a magnetic field that takes – that works with a swipe card reader yeah. and, and looks as if you've swiped a card, but you haven't. So – Imagine the clerk's reaction, because this would work anywhere. You don't have to be trained. It would work anywhere that they have a, a card reader. When you go like this and say, I've paid. Yeah. Pay no attention. It's I've paid. Here's a guy going to use it. This is how it's supposed to work according to Samsung. Uh, so, like Samsung Pay, kind of works everywhere, even on this janky old thing. Who wants to pay with his phone? What do you want, Hannibal? I want to pay with my phone. Wait, don't look at the cameras, Mike. You ready? It doesn't okay. work. Watch me. Boom. 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 Samsung Pay is here. That's Pretty how Samsung well. says it's supposed to work. <laughs> they don't show him getting arrested and dragged off to prison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, okay, okay so, so do you think this Google thing will be become a pay with, what's it called? Pay with Google? Pay with, uh, pay with magic? Well, uh, I, I, I they, they've sort of been calling it pay with Google, but uh, so in the blog post, they do say they use Bluetooth, low energy, Wi-Fi and location oh, okay. services on your phone. Okay. So that, okay. that much they've said publicly. That's perfect. Um, yeah. And, and I have to admit, so I've used it at McDonald's, uh, not admit, I have to say, um, you would think, you know, some random guy at McDonald's would not be that interested in learning, you know, how to take a new form of payment, but it worked flawlessly. Well, he has so the I'm, software on his screen. I mean, that's one of the reasons right. that works compared to Samsung Pay, where you don't have to know anything about it for it to work. He has right. it's on his terminal and it pops up. Uh, it, yeah. the The app is called Google Hands Free, and I did install it until I realized that I'll never be going to a McDonald's in Silicon Valley. So, right, it's only in one city, so don't don't Mountain go View. to your local McDonald's and yeah. try to make this work because it's not gonna. Yeah. And Papa John's. But if, Papa John's. But if you're in the if you're in the South Bay, there is this awesome ice cream shop called Tin Pot Creamery, Ooh. and I think Hands Free gets you like five or ten bucks free what? there. Okay. Like, use that. Oh. It, it is. Really good ice cream. Now, Am Amazon has patented, and I don't know if this will uh, go anywhere, but has patented pay by selfie. Um, <laughs> so, right. and the, and what happens there is uh, you actually have a gesture that <laughs> take your pick. That is your your motion or gesture that proves it's you. So that's like your new pin code is, or you know. <laughs> And, and that's better than a fingerprint. You know what? It probably <laughs> is. I hate to tell you. 
Uh, who knows how good those fingerprints actually are? And I can tell you, it's a lot better than the sign with the stylus, which yeah. nobody even checks. I, I, I want to hear. I want to hear Google's plan for like adoption on this this pay with Google thing, though, because it sounds like you need special software and some kind of beacon thing that fires the signal out. Yeah, it's to it's your probably cell similar phone. to the uh, Square Pay with Square thing, right? And, and, and they did very well. I mean, I thought they we, got it. We've seen such, I feel like we've seen such hard adoption problems with right. NFC already when that's right. when that's just a terminal box that you buy and plug in and will work with pretty much every register to go and say you need to run the software on your register system so that the picture pops up or right. whatever. Sounds really hard to to kind of get out to everyone. That's what's great about well, Samsung and, Pay. Right. Yeah. True. And, and, and to be fair, to Google, they say it's an experiment. So they're, they're not yeah, rolling yeah. it out worldwide. They're testing it to see how it works. All I know is I get $5 off when I buy 10, <laughs> 10 pot creamery, well, and I'm like, that's not yeah, bad. I'm a fan of that payment well, system. Well, now, <laughs> now that you explain how it works, I, it's not as puzzling as it was to us last week where we thought, well, the only authentication is I say my initials. But I understand now it's sensing the phone. It actually sounds like it's probably fully secure. Uh, if you can come up with a better experience, then maybe you'll be right. able to get the adoption. But, Ron, I completely agree. There's a lot of, you know, friction there that would have to be overcome. The nice thing is with Apple Pay, uh, you know, there's a lot more people thinking about possibilities of how to do payment. And e maybe even some of the places that, that weren't as uh, intrigued before are now like, oh, okay, People are, you know, people are actually paying at their Walgreens with their phone. We need to start paying attention to this and figure out what a what a good purchase experience looks like. Yeah, it doesn't look like yeah. that Penny Arcade uh, wizard. <laughs> that was really, <laughs> I like that. Thank you for pointing my way to that comic. That was pretty. I feel like that wizard most of the time when yeah. I uh, did we did we we showed it, didn't we? Let me let me pull it back up again, just real. Yeah, quick. I showed it, but yeah. Ron was talking yeah. about something else. When you try to pay with your phone and it works, that's a very attractive thing you just did. Yes, I know <laughs> it's very powerful technology, and I am at the helm. When it will <laughs> not work so good, it would appear my magical wand doth failish me. Mayhap the mystic weave is thin in your strange realm. Pray tell, how many paper faces do you require? <laughs> and obviously the. Woman is not so impressed. Good. Uh, I'm that guy. <laughs> See, I've been using Samsung Pay as much as I can. Do you use it with the swipe machines? Yeah, I use it all over and what town. What do people say? A lot of people look at me like, we don't take Apple Pay. I'm like, it's not, okay, it's not an Apple. First of all, Apple doesn't make a curved phone. Um, <laughs> and then I'm like, just, it's cool. And it's I pulled cool. it up in front it's of it. It's going to work. And it works. They and don't think you're through. hacking them? No, and then I'll show them on screen. Like, it shows my credit card. It shows the last four right. so they can, like, Target always asks for. I should start for, using this. Last four, please. And the great thing is on the, the Samsung phones, Leo, it, once you activate it, yeah. it lives as a little tab on the bottom of your window. I'd show it, but it, I don't have a camera pointing that way. Okay. But you just swipe up from your thumb, from your home button. You just swipe up oh, while your screen's locked. And it says, do you want to pay with Samsung? Right. And you enter your thumb or your pin to activate it. And then it starts pulsing to let you know it's sending the signal, hold it there, and then it'll vibrate to let you know it's done. So they give me three choices on this. Oops. Oh, crap. Now I'm getting an ad. To make payments with Samsung Pay, select Samsung Pay as your default mobile payment. So you can't use Android Pay and Samsung Pay simultaneously. But you could right, say use... Samsung Pay wants to take over the NFC chip too, I think. Yeah. Okay. So you have to choose one or the other. All right. Um, and then you could say, if your app supports tap and pay, use the app that's open. So I could have Android Pay open oh. and use Android Pay uh, with tap to pay. Or I should just use Samsung Pay, right? Why not? I think you could also use Google Wallet if you have the Google Wallet credit Google card Wallet. and you entered as a Google Wallet card. Whatever happened to Google Wallet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. I'm going to, since you're, you're, you're leading the way, Jason, I'm going to try this from now on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I oh, think yeah, it's fun. I I, yeah, yeah, I think it's great, and it works great. And, um, you know, Jerry, my partner, who's a diehard Apple fan, you know, <laughs> he says straight out, it, that is so much better than Apple Pay. Mm, how about that, folks? Be because the times nice. he's tried to use Apple Pay, you know, it's you know, you go to Lucchese's Deli, they're like, no, we haven't updated ours on yeah, machine. I'm surprised it's they still, haven't updated yada, yada. their machine. That's yeah. But they don't have to with with Samsung Pay. You, you you get you get to use new technology with their old technology, and it works every time. I have a new person. I don't know where my wallet is. <laughs>
just, the <laughs> thing that gets me, uh, the thing Mini that gets backpack. me about those little credit card machines is like, now if you if you're bored in line, Google the model number on the front of the credit card machine and see how much it costs. I was at Best Buy the other day, and the thing that they had was like fourteen hundred dollars yeah. for this stupid machine. The machine. That yeah, wow. yeah, the, the little box that you But type they into. have to do it because if they don't, whoever is the least secure pays for fraud. Yeah. Right. So that's so the, kind of a strong uh, incentive to get it right. There's, there's no reason why those should have to cost that much either. That's a I lot mean, of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me a Nexus 7. I would, Come on. I, don't, don't most people just rent them? I mean, does, do people really buy them outright? I'd be surprised if they did. At that price, I'd assume they probably just. They pay a monthly fee with their with yeah. their uh, bank their for the card bill. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're already paying through the nose for the, you know, the credit card. And then uh, Square just came out with the new contactless. Um, if you ever had a Square, I carry one on me I all the time. To, you mean like the thing that you swipe? The little with? dongle. Yeah, yeah, they now have an NFC contactless pay uh, Square. You can buy. You can get from them. And people can use any of the you know Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Android Pay. With Square, so if you use Square at a store or, like I said, I carry one in my in my pocket. When I used to, you know, sell things, I'd just pull it out and be like, "Here you go." Cool. Which I can't find. I got to find a credit card that supports Samsung Pay. That's the other problem. Is a lot of credit card companies are nervous about. Yeah, it. they were slow to roll out at first. Yeah. <laughs> I tried mine the first week it came out and it was nothing happened well, and like bank of america doesn't work let me see if anybody else does here well when when io happens hopefully i'll get to try this this pay with google thing since <laughs> oh yeah uh, they gotta use I'll, it at io right yeah since we'll all be in town I'm, sh I'm sure they'll they'll have some kind of demo station or something mcdonald's or papa john's will probably right? set up a little booth yeah i'm so mad are you Tim excited Pop about io huh I, yeah i, I think, know tim Pop i think it'll be really good Is yeah it good? but Is um doing doing it at um uh, Shoreline Amphitheater will be different. Oh, yeah, I know. Why? Tell us how they're going to do that. Doing it at Shoreline? Explain how they're going to do that because well, that's not a venue with seminar rooms like Moscone it's, is. It's, it's just not, a theater. And, and I am. I, this is purely personal speculation. I have no idea whatsoever. But Moscone always got full and yeah. always sold out in like twenty minutes. Right. And yeah. Shoreline, you've got enough room where you can have the keynotes. And then I have no idea whether they're actually going to do this. But it would be neat if you'd let the developers peel off and break out and go visit various folks at Google because that's where the Googleplex is, is all around so, Shoreline yeah. Amphitheater. And we kind of speculated so maybe they'd have uh, autonomous vehicles come and ferry you to that <laughs> part of the Googleplex. <laughs> that's what we're I'm hoping. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure we have enough autonomous vehicles for How everybody? How far is it to Shoreline? Oh. So there's the Shoreline Amphitheater. You see they have a big lawn, but the lawn mm -hmm. is sloping. It's not like you'd set up tables on the lawn and then there's an auditorium. Mm -hmm. So that's really going to be for the keynote only. I would expect so, but you can walk from Shoreline to the Google offices. Uh, we've done that many times. And in fact, if yeah, as you zoom out, basically every building you see is a Google office. Oh, okay. So they can so, just take over that. As those far spaces. as the eye can see, <laughs> Google. Google is <laughs> north, uh, north of 101. Which yeah. one has the uh, semi autonomous canopy tent environment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the the so, thermal so that's electron just... neutral. Yeah. <laughs> Just Network Google I.O. cannot be contained by any building, so they just did it outside in the amphitheater. Is that that's the plan? I don't know what we're going to do know. at Google I.O. now since they announced Android N, where it's just going to be drinking and... and well, developing. Matt might know. Is anything you want to talk about, Matt? Any? Um, uh, I don't know what the topics okay. are going to be, but, you know, they're always looking for, you know, what are, for example, in search, they're like, maybe they'll talk about AMP, oh, take right. a drink, or progressive right. web apps or something right. like that, so... And I I wonder if there'll be some Pixel C uh, information. I'd love to I'd love to see, you know, more robust because I really love the Pixel C and I just I think some more robust support it could be good. It's May eighteenth to the twentieth. Uh, we have two invitations, uh, so two of our um, intrepid reporters. Intrepid reporters. Thank you, Jason <laughs> Howell and uh, a player to be named later will be going. I'm not sure, but they're gonna. They're, I think we're gonna have a cage match to see who gets the yeah. other one. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've drawn straws for the cage match. Yeah. Um, and, and they're doing the lottery again uh, this year. So I don't, uh, let's see, the lottery, oh, it ended. You had till March 10th to get in the lottery. Yeah. And then they're going to announce, they're announcing soon, right? People are sending. Yeah, people petitions. have been getting results. I've okay. seen a few. Okay. I've seen a few disappointed posts out there. Oh. <laughs> they claim it doesn't go by the order of which you no, put in it your doesn't. entry. No, mm. right. it's random, right? right? 
So you could have done it yeah. at exactly, you know, one minute after, or you could do it 10 hours That's later. That's the only way to do it, because you don't want to only allow people who have fast fingers to get it. <laughs> no. Who are, who are, busy who are motivated and up early. Yeah. And that's just not... That's so, not Leo, uh, I don't know if you've seen the breaking news, but uh, there's this competition called Pwn to Own. Yes. Where if... So it's apparently it's Chansec going on West. right now. Yeah. Yeah, oh. it's going on right now. And it, it looks like Safari has fallen twice, maybe. Oh, and boy. then somebody used Flash and a Windows kernel bug. Oh. So, well, so Safari down twice, Windows maybe down once. It looks like so far Chrome is eluding people. And it looks like so far VMware Workstation has not been hacked. So <laughs> interesting days. That's interesting. Actually, yeah. Google has upped the... Uh, reward to $100,000 for hacking a Chromebook or Chrome OS because it's so robust. And I, I don't imagine they're actually doing uh, Chrome OS at uh, Pwn to Own. The rules, are at, uh, the rules at Pwn to Own are essentially um, uh, you have to, uh, uh, you, you're, you're challenged to hack, um, let me see if I can find the rules here. I have them in front of me somewhere. You're challenged to hack a computer with a standard install. Actually, you're usually hacking the browser, right? So it would be Safari, Opera, Internet Explorer, Chrome. Mm -hmm. And you get to win the computer that it's on if you do it. And I think they've added a cash prize now to it, which I have mixed oh, yeah. feelings about because it's so, it's the, you know, now people are coming up with zero days and holding on to them so they can win Pwn to Own. But, uh, you know, the <laughs> Facebook is paying more for bug bounties. Google is paying a lot more for bug bounties. And so, you know, I, I don't think there's that many people that are holding on. The prizes that I'm seeing are 80000 60000 and 40000 have been won. And those are large amounts of money. But a lot of people can also make that money by just disclosing, you know, out of the normal cycle. Uh, and, and paying for those vulnerabilities, I think, makes everybody much more secure. Chrome's so. offering 65000 Microsoft 65000 Flash and Edge, 60,000. Uh, Apple's offering 40,000 for Safari. Uh, and you get more points, I guess, for the harder stuff. 13 points for VMware Workstation. And you only get three points for uh, Target Sandbox Escape. Um, mm. So it's, uh, yeah, this is interesting. So the only one that's not fallen so far is Chrome. <laughs> Well, I, I I saw somewhere a tweet, like it's literally going on right now, yeah. and I saw some tweet that somebody was saying that somebody's trying their fourth attempt on Chrome. Uh, I think the Chrome team normally does their security updates right before Pwn yeah. to Own, you know, it yeah. closes all the known <laughs> vulnerabilities. Yeah. So it's, it, you know, it's a fun time. It's like the Super Bowl of cracking, you know. So you don't think it, it promotes somebody coming up with uh, zero days and holding on to them? They might hold on to them, but it's at, at least promotes them coming forward with them. Right. And I think that's the most important thing. I Absolutely. don't want them to be locked away in a in a government vault or some spy agency or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. in everybody's interest that these flaws get exposed. Um, yeah, and then fixed. And then yep. fixed, yeah. So, cool. It's a shame that there's no phones on here. It seems to all be like desktop operating systems and stuff. I wonder how yeah. easy it is to hack a phone these days. Uh it's, FBI can't do it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I know Ooh, Google burn. has. Uh, there's there's Android security bounties, just like there are for oh, of course there should be. a bunch of other operating yeah, systems. Yeah, yeah. So it it exists, yeah. but there's, it's just there's no there's no contest for it. Yeah. Well, and if you could hack an iPhone, I think you can make a lot more money than you could make at Pwn to Own. You can sell that to governments, or <laughs> or you know let people install things on the app store and root their phone. So I think the rules for this contest are you have to disclose the hole that you found. Right. So yeah. Absolutely should be that way. Yeah. They might not. Yeah. Uh, the score so far after round three from the zero day initiative, official Pwn to own uh, uh, twit, Twitter uh, Vulcan team has already won 13 points and $80,000. Jung Hoon Lee, who won last year, I think a big prize, $60,000. The 10 cent security team, $40,000, no money for Team Sniper from Tencent. That was Team Shield that won money. Or, oh, Tencent sent three teams. Or uh, Shuan Wu, no, wow. no money there. So there it is so far. Trend Micro and Hewlett Packard Enterprise as sponsors of the Zero Day Initiative. Pwned to own at Cansec West. Three rounds so far, but the action continues. If you're curious, I mean, how exciting can this be to watch hackers attempt to break into a system? Here's a, a thrilling image <laughs> from the real-time <laughs> excitement that is Pwn to Own. 
it's not as exciting as a ghost <laughs> screen, but you know, I, I think it's fun, more fun to watch it go. Uh, <laughs> anyway, if you follow Zero Day Initiative uh, at T H E Z D I at the Z D I, uh, you can see what's going on. That's fun. That's cool. That's real. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Matt, for bringing that up. I forgot that was today. I think it continues again kind of tomorrow, too. I think it's over two days. And this mm -hmm. time it's at uh, South By. It's not in Vancouver. Um, it's because mm, Trend Micro okay. kind of took it over. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and it's uh, so it's at South By, which actually makes it it makes it more fun. Pwn to own. Uh, let's uh, take a break. Come back with picks, tips, anything you want to share with us. This is always fun to have Matt Cuts on and Ron Amadio. I appreciate your guys taking some time with us this afternoon. Uh, love sure. love doing it with you. Uh, our show today brought to you by uh, something you'll probably both be familiar with, Atlassian. Everybody who uh, writes software probably knows about Atlassian. Their amazing Jira is the way to assign, track, and manage tasks for any project, no matter how com complex. We use Jira uh, designing the new website. Our web team in Austin um, would, you know, we would write user stories and Get them up on the Jira board, and they would they would work on it. In fact, if you ever saw Silicon Valley, they're using a, a, essentially a Jira style workflow where you have a bit by bit you chisel away at a problem. Um, Jira is really phenomenal for doing this, and it's especially for distributed uh, teams um, because uh, you know it, somebody's working on it in Austin. We got to review it in uh, Petaluma, and Jira makes it easy for everybody. It's all web based. Our engineering team uses Confluence. That's what we use to document uh, equipment and work processes. Um, and Jira can be used, too, to manage vendors. That's how we kind of managed our web design. Um, HipChat is what we use all the time. We're all in Atlassian here. Uh, uh, for everything from planning events to keeping track of engineering issues, um, we've tied in some of these great services like uh, Panoptica to our uh, HipChat. So when a site goes down or a server's slow, I know immediately. Russell knows immediately. We can see it in the HipChat. You get instant messaging. You get video chatting. Uh, and then, of course, test, review, and manage code in real time with Bitbucket. Atlassian makes tools that help teams in every industry, from startup to enterprise, make great ideas Real. We're big fans of Atlassian. And if you're not using one of these Atlassian tools, I want you to check it out. A T L A S Atlas S I A N. There's two S's. A T L A S S I A N dot com and learn more about Jira and about Confluence and HipChat and Bitbucket to give your team everything you need to organize, discuss, and complete shared work. They're really the kings of this and they do such a great job. We, we love them. Atlassian.com. Unleash the potential in your team and build what's next. I'll tell you what's next on Twig. Picks, tips, ideas. Ron, do you have anything you want to share with us? You're, uh, an Android app you love, a piece of gear. I know you're the product reviewer. Do you, did you like the S7? Do you like it? Um, it's fine. It was a phone. I don't, I don't, I mean, it, it's, it's such a small, it's such a, it's like a, it's a spec bump. It's, it's pretty much. Yeah. The same as the It fixed the S6. all the things I had wrong with the S6 though. The S6 didn't have enough RAM, enough horsepower. It had we hesitated a lot. And this thing is the 820. You got to love the Qual the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820, right? Yeah, it is it Amazing. is Amazing. Next I'm doing one of these. There's so many phones around here. This <laughs> this phone. This <laughs> What's that? Um this is a this is a Xiaomi ah. Mi Five, right? Oh, the Mi yeah, Five. Yeah, we love the Mi Four. That was yeah. a very impressive phone. This is this is another one. Um, pretty much the same specs as the the uh, S Seven. It's a Snapdragon eight twenty, and I don't know, like three gigs of RAM. Um, and it, it's it's just really close to what Samsung's putting out, except it's three hundred and five bucks. Wow. I think this is where, where this is S7 like eight hundred bucks. So expensive. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there, there's even... Can you get the Xiaomi in the U.S., though? I mean... Uh, not yet. Um, they do have a store here that sells, like, headphones and other little silly things. But the thought is that maybe this will be the first one uh, that they actually bring to the U.S. I don't know. It has um, it has an international uh, software build on it. So it, it will actually show up in English and oh, interesting. Uh, will kind of work here. And it has... I think it has a decent set of... Uh, LTE 
bands that should kind of work here, maybe? I'm, I'm still kind of looking at that. Um, you know, one place that other companies are at a disadvantage, even Apple, is that Samsung makes those OLED screens. And, and I think kind of keeps them to themselves. Is it is it screen anywhere near as good as the S7? Because that is an amazing screen. Uh, no, it's yeah. it's 1080p where the Samsung is 1440p, and and like yeah, and the weird curved OLED thing that Samsung has going on. <laughs> the thing is, I don't really know if you'll miss it. Like the Samsung thing is. But even the colors, I just love Sa the Super AMOLED. I just yeah, the AMOLED is is like super so saturated. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. I don't know what I what I would like to see Samsung do is is be more of like a integrate their various component sections more. Like Samsung could totally make a one hundred percent Samsung phone, uh, and they just don't. Like right. this still has a, a Qualcomm processor and all that, which which actually still gets made in Samsung's factories. Oh, that's uh, but, interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, it's all Samsung's it's all on the Fab, phones. huh? Uh, yeah. Interesting. So they do uh, but, the Exynos uh, everywhere, but the U.S. here in the U.S. it's uh, it's Qualcomm, and I think that's because right. of the radio bands probably more than anything else, right? They did Exynos last year on the S6. Yeah, worldwide. because the A10 was like a horrible chip. Right. So it's seen, so they can do it. They just chose not to. I think because Samsung's component section treats the phone section as any other customer, like they try to stay independent. Right. Right. That's uh, smart. But I don't know. They they could really play their strengths if they just came together as a unit and 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 released, I don't know, something that only they could build. Battery life on the uh, S6 is a big, uh, S7 is a huge improvement over the S6. Uh, I'm getting really good, like, look, 80%. I mean, uh, here it is four in the afternoon. Uh, this easily wow. gets through the day. According to uh, GSAM, I think it's uh, 15 and a half hours, and I think that's even low. I think it was it was lower at first because I was uh, installing everything, and I think it's, come, it's yeah. been going up every day. It's, and you're on marshmallow uh, now, so you get doze and doze is great. And, and but and you know, stuff. and and also notice the screen usage, ten percent. Um, it, it the screen mm. is much less of a of a drain than it is on any other phone I've used. Usually, the screen on almost any phone is 30, 40, 50 percent of the usage. Here, it's very it sips at the usage. So, I don't know. I I and the camera. You come on. You love this camera. You must. Yeah, oh, the camera's great. Samsung really figured out cameras like last year and has just been putting out some of the best stuff, yeah. Yeah. All right, all right, I won't argue with you. Uh, <laughs> it is twice as much as the Mi 5. Right, it, it is twice as much, yeah. yeah. But uh, I don't know. The All of the the interesting cell phone stuff, I think, happens at the lower end nowadays than, than at the, the super high end stuff. The super high end phones just take last year's design and put more right. specs in it. But when they when they kind of do this competing on price thing, I think it gets more interesting. Aren't we maxed out though? I mean, we're at peak phone already. That's the problem. There's nothing, what are you gonna do? What what could you do that would make everybody go, wow, that's right. a real. In, in Yeah, in America, sure. But yeah. you know, there's there, there was a thing in the roundup about, you know, people in China getting cell phones and, and all right. that that's that's going to be the big like tech story for phones next right right um how about the robin that was 400 bucks did you like that um yeah it, it it was a fine like hardware phone but they tied it to this weird cloud system yeah. that doesn't really make a ton of sense i mean everybody anybody that complains about phone storage just says give me an sd card and then they're totally happy. Right. And if they had just done that, I think the storage market would have been a lot happier with the uh, the next bit, Robin. Because right. right now it's like, oh, well, you can use cl cloud storage, but you also have to use a ton of your mobile data to move stuff back and forth and, and get it up there. And it's like that's that that stops the whole point of storage. Like the whole point was I don't have great Internet access, so I want to have these movies and music and stuff with me. And right. it, it doesn't do that. So it's it's weird. I don't know. It's cool to see a new phone company, though. I look forward to getting one once they uh, start selling in the U.S. Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Matt Cuts, your thing of the week. So this is... This is oh, this Matt, is just, Matt, 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 unplug your headset. It's... Uh, uh, oh, oh, ha. Uh, 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 the AI has taken while, over. While he's fixing that, let me just mention somebody was wondering... Uh, in mm -hmm. GSAM, what the percentage of usage for the screen is when it's on or off. And uh, it's 3% when it's on, which is really good considering it has the always on feature, which means that even when this phone is off and just sitting on the desk, it's showing the time and the 
a few little things. And uh, I have to say, three percent drain while off, while uh, uh, wait a minute, that says discharge while on off three percent, eighteen percent. I think that must be reversed. It must be eighteen percent went on and three percent went off. That well, otherwise, why wouldn't you six times more when it's off than when it's on? Would that make any sense? <laughs> All right. That floating clock. Yeah. It's, well, no, but see, I like that. See, <laughs> it, it's just sitting there. It has an always on. Uh, it, and, uh, that is, that's a, I like that. That might be the 18%, though. No. Because that's always on. No. You left it there all day. It's only been five hours, though. It hasn't been on that long. No, it hasn't. Uh, these, this is not a good day to, uh, uh, to see the battery <laughs> life. But, uh, in, you know, days past, I use it 100%. Today was, I had brought out the Nexus 6P to talk about uh, nut roll. <laughs> Not roll. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got an inside track on that one. Uh, Android I nut roll. Nutella. No, you is that what you're betting on Nutella? Yeah, I, I there's a silly Photoshop yeah. somewhere of of me doing a um. Nutella. I took a stupid Nutella bottle and wrote Android on it. It's just. I don't Matt, Matt have you ever text. been to the meeting? The and there must be a fun meeting where they decide <laughs> what the code letter is going to represent. Uh, I haven't been to the ones for Android, but uh, it is fun whenever we're talking about search projects and deciding... Pigeon or penguin or yeah, whatever. Yeah, or caffeine or, yeah. you know, what do you want to call it? And, and do we want to name it at all? Those kinds of things. Because, yeah. you know, you, that's that's your chance to put something out there that can even be an inside joke that people might not realize. So. Yeah. yeah, to it, compare it, the 6P wall on off is 22% and 13%. So there's a big... Big difference uh, there. What do you What do you got, Matt? As your pick of the week there? Just something to know if you're a publisher, webmaster, search engine optimizer, is that uh, we mentioned earlier in the show that Google in May is going to be giving more weight to mobile friendly pages. So if you are planning on making mobile friendly websites, we will be changing the user agent for Googlebot. Oh. Uh, now that's for the smartphone version of Googlebot. So it, it used to pretend to be an iPhone. Now it pretends to be a Nexus 5X. Well, so rightly see, so. Yeah. When you see one of these guys, Nexus 5X, surfing the web, showing that's, up. That's the Googlebot. That's, that's, it, odds are it might be the Googlebot. And treat him just like you'd treat any other browser. But um, that's something to know about. It, 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 I, maybe the Nexus phones are, are popular enough now that we don't have to say we're an iPhone. But I think for 99% of uh, websites, it won't make any difference. It's just something to be aware of if you haven't heard about that. That just came out. Do you have an so opinion? Why? Go ahead. What, what is this? Why? Why did you switch? Why change the user agent? Yeah. Well, uh, there's some things that the, you know, whenever the iPhone isn't under your control, you know, for example, the iPhone didn't support Flash. And so you can, you can imagine a lot of different functionalities that people might try to say, oh, I'll, I'll just poll or I think the iPhone is capable of this. And now with it being the Nexus 5X as the user agent, we're able to have that under our control. We're able to check, you know, for example, we can, we can get a Nexus 5X pretty cheaply. So you could actually have these guys load the page and then have it load the page from other you know, devices to check whether things are cloaking and all those kinds of things. So um, yeah, it's not a huge change, but it's just something where it gives us a little more ability to maybe monitor if anything's going on. And we should point out this is not an intent to uh, any intent to hide the user agent. It says in the user agent string, Googlebot. That's and, right. You know, I mean, it's not like they're pretending they're not the Googlebot. It's just that you have to, you can't give Googlebot as the, as the, the hardware device. <laughs> Yeah. And, and if you're going to change your version number anyway, like instead right. of mobile Safari 537 to mobile Safari, you know, like 600 or whatever, why not go ahead and, and list some mobile or, or modern, you know, phone that you've right. already got. That you own and make. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a, a favorite for what N might stand for, Matt, knowing that you have no inside information? I have no inside information, and the whole KitKat thing seemed to get mixed reactions. But I like Nutella because yeah. Nutella, I don't know if you know this, but it's delicious. It's I know so it's good. delicious. <laughs> but it is a brand name. That's what you're talking about. KitKat was a brand name and, and did get mm -hmm. some heat because uh, nobody wants to say a brand name. Um, and they abandoned that brand name thing for the last couple. Yeah. But you could do loves nougat. Nutella. But Good. everybody loves Nutella. So yesterday, uh, they did a, you know, the Opinion Rewards program from Google yeah. that you use? Yeah. They use the Opinion Rewards to send out a question. What should Android N be named? Damn it, why didn't I Specifically, the question is, what tasty <laughs> food comes to mind <laughs> when you think of the letter N? N. Nut roll. And the winner so far is has nachos. been... Nachos. No. 
Oh. None of those, actually. Nori? Uh, New York cheesecake. <laughs> New York cheesecake. Oh. That's that's too compound. That, that's now, New, New York cheesecake is what they call Android, and internally in, like, the code base, there's always a separate oh. name that it gets from the developers. And that's the actual that's, name from the developers, huh? Yeah, in the code. So Lollipop was, uh. Uh, was it... I forget. Uh, key lime pie was Kit Kat. Yeah, we all that. we thought it might be key lime pie. Yeah. Yeah. So the key developers give it some some separate name because they can't wait for the marketers to decide what they want to do. Right. So they, they have, have to, to have a name something. for it. Yeah. Name <laughs> and space. I, and yeah. I just found out if I if I scroll down on the nine to five Google story about yeah. this, I can vote. Ooh. What should Ooh. Android Napoleon and be called? Nut Brittle Nachos Nori Noodles Nougat. nougat. Where's Nutella? It's yeah, not yeah. even on the list. Oh. And by the way, I'm peeved because I'll, so I'm I also Diego. do Google Opinion Rewards, <laughs> and they didn't ask me. <laughs> they, they says there's no survey at this time. They're just watching Twig, so they don't they don't need to ask you. <sighs> <sighs> not roll, not roll, not roll, not roll, not roll. Now I'm hungry. You got to think about what your icon would look like. So I don't know. But then a jar of, of Nutella doesn't really work either. So no, it does. There's an Android mashup that has like the little Android guy with that. With oh, okay. The, it's and he's sticking Nutella. out of a jar of okay. Nutella. I so think we all know it's going to be Nutella. That'd be so nice if they handed out Nutella as like the swag. Oh, you know what? It's good, <laughs> but uh, Patrick Delahanty has pointed out there really is only one name it can be. And yes, it's a brand name. Nerds, yeah. <laughs> but it's the right brand name, nerds. Nerds. Nerds are good too. I nerds. like nerds. Google nerds. That's what you no, call knowing, it. knowing Google, if they're not going to announce the name at I/O, they will have a spread of snacks that begin with N. Yeah. Just spread be all over the show. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> hey, I want to mention uh, my pick is uh, after having extensive trials, I Android Wear. I love. I love Android Wear. And I have two Moto 360s, including the Moto 360 Sport, but it but it doesn't do the kinds of things, including continuous heart rate monitoring, that I really would like it to do. And I've ended up coming up with uh, my favorite fitness watch, which does, you know, it's not Android Wear, but it still does notifications. I can control music, play back with it. Uh, it has alarms in it, and it is much better for fitness. Fitbit, of course, which is the king in this field, and this is the Fitbit Blaze which at 200 bucks, I think is uh, my choice for, it's not a great watch. I mean, you don't have a whole bunch of different watch faces and all that, but it really is a great fitness device, including continuous heart rate monitoring. So this is the only device I have that will tell me what my resting heart rate is. And frankly, I've, that's a very good indicator of overall uh, health. As I've been able to bring that down, I've felt better and better. It has a much broader range of exercises you can choose from including some exercises that most fitness bands don't do, but that I do a lot, like spinning and Pilates. And I, I feel like that that's, uh, I mean, of course, there's no steps in spinning and Pilates, but the fact that it has accurate continuous, and by the way, I've tested it, it is accurate continuous heart rate measurement, um, and uh, really does do a good job of tracking your overall movement. It ties in via Bluetooth LE to the Fitbit app on any phone or all your phones. I have it on all the phones, so it doesn't really care what phone it's attached to. Uh, and they have in this a built-in FitStar, mini FitStar program that'll work you through some uh, workouts through the watch. So of all of the fitness bands, and I've tried them all, including, unfortunately, Android Wear, Apple Watch is one of my favorites. It's pretty good, but this one's even better. And five-day battery life means you don't have to go crazy uh, charging it all the time. It does not kill the battery to have continuous uh, heart rate monitoring. So I'm very happy with uh, this. And so my little, it's my pick, the Fitbit Blaze. Ugly as sin. But you know what? <laughs> Who cares? You can pop it out of the, ba by the way, see there's other bands available. So you don't, it pops out of the of the band. It's not, it's not actually integral to the band. So in fact, you have to pop it out to charge. As usual, they have a weird charger. I don't so what does what does the underside of that look like? Because the, the reason the Apple Watch is good is because there's two green heart rate monitor That's lights what's and on two this. receivers. Yeah. And most of the Android. Okay, that has two. So that has two lights and one receiver, maybe. It looks yeah. Like? It yeah, is okay. as accurate as the Apple Watch, which is okay. absolutely the most accurate device, much more than the Android Wear devices. 
Right, um, and the reason none of the Android Wear devices work is because they have one light and one right. receiver, and that's right. usually it. It's only because the the hardware makers like cheaped out and right. didn't yeah didn't go with the two light solution. Yeah. So that's cool. I okay. mean, it's got a, it's got a crappy uh, LCD screen that's not very bright. It is always on, which is kind of nice. Um, oh. I don't know. I feel like this is uh, it's not a watch. It's a fitness device. None of these are really decent watches in general. Although I actually really appreciate how the uh, the Moto 360 uh, looks. I, I got one with a metal band, and I think it looks the most like a watch. I love round. This is square. Hmm. But uh, anyway, you probably, uh, I know you're a fitness fanatic, Matt Cuts. You probably have a device you like to use for your workouts. I rock old school, the Fitbit Blade yeah. or Pulse yeah. or One yeah. or something like that. I've lost so many of those down the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's like a subscription because you lose them so quickly yeah. or they break. Yeah. yeah. I left one. I tell this story. I left one at the San Diego Zoo, one in Paris, and one in a toilet. Uh, and I think one got washed. So, uh, but you could wear it that way. You could wear this that way too. I think Fitbit really knows what they're doing. Actually, of all the yeah. uh, of all the trackers. What's your thirty day challenge, Matt? This month is fitness month. Yay. So I'm trying to exercise once or twice a day. Check my blood pressure. Eat healthy, mindfully, slowly. Put it all together. All the all the I things where I was a slug over the winter, I'm trying yeah. to undo that in one month. You so. actually look great. You really look <laughs> Thank good. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Even the beard is under control. <laughs> it got a little out of control. <laughs> a little, little trimming action. You were looking a little grizzly, Adams, I admit. Although that's the new thing. All the kids now have these big black beards. Yeah. I've never seen. It feels like we're working among uh, woodsmen. Yeah, lumberjack. <laughs> Lumberjacks. Players everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Uh, Lumbersexuals. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hey, it's so great to have you, Matt Cuts, from the Google, at Matt Cuts on the Twitter, mattcuts.com slash blog to keep up on them. Uh, any plans uh, for the future? Do you know what, what your uh, long-term strategy is, or are you still just going day-to-day? -day? I'm sure whenever I come up with some plans, I'll let folks know. <laughs> I love it. Well, we'll just keep following you because, uh, you know, and, and anytime you want to come back here. You could have a full-time job on this show if you wish. It's always fun to be on. Thanks I, for having me. Just a couple hours a week. That's all it takes. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Ron Thank Amadio you. from Ars Technica. A must read. He's the uh, he's the gadget guy. The uh, div what do you call it? Devices guy. Uh, yeah, reviews. <laughs> Sorry, I hit my thing. Uh, yeah, reviews editor. Um, I, right. I review cell phones. If you want to know anything Holy about cell phones, I have. Crime This is just what was on my desk at this minute. Jeez, Louise. Um, <laughs> uh, so I just did the S7. Next up is the Mi Five. Yep. And then um. And what's then what's your daily Huawei driver these days? And, uh, Nexus 5X, because software matters more than any of this hardware stuff. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I like smaller phones rather than this gigantic stuff. But um, I don't know. Now with Android N, I kind of appreciate the bigger screen more. So, no kidding. Yeah, it uses the screen well. I love okay. the 6P, but I, the camera is so good on the uh, S7. That it's just, it's not, and the camera and the screen, yeah. just put it over the top. But the ne but the two Nexus cameras are really good, too, so I'm not, they're I'm good. really not worried they're about competent. the S7. Yeah, yeah, they're competent. And they used to never be, they used to no, be totally. No, much better than the 5. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Matt. Thank awesome you all being for being here. here. Huh? I said oh, it was yeah. awesome being here. We'll see you at I.O. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll run into Jason. <laughs> both somewhere. of you. Look for a tall guy. We do this show. <laughs> We do this show every Wednesday, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern Time. That's now 20.30 UTC. Uh, if you want to watch live, if you can't, don't worry. On-demand audio and video available on our website, twit.tv slash twig. Or subscribe in your favorite podcatcher or twit app. That way you won't miss an episode. Next week, live in New York City at the CUNY Studio, the brand new CUNY Studio on Times Square. It'll be Jeff Jarvis, Gina Trapani, and yes, I'll be there too for a very special This Week in Google. We'll see you then. Bye -bye.